Okay, I think we can start now. Uh, if I can just request colleagues who are in the corridor to please uh, please join us. Ha, please unko andar bhej dijiye. So we we will start in just a minute now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can use any of the doors, either here or or at the back. Great. Thank you. Okay, a very good morning to all of you, and uh, it is such a pleasure, you know, and such a delight to see, uh, you know, see you all here, you know, for this global webinar for the River Cities Alliance, right? Uh, my name is Victor Shinde. You know, I, I work at the National Institute of Urban Affairs, okay, and I, I head the Climate Center for Cities at at NIUA. So, for those of you who are not familiar with NIUA, so we are the think tank of India's Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Right, so uh, uh, we are kind of involved with shaping the urban narrative of India, uh, and uh, closely work with the ministry, you know, in kind of uh, rolling out the different missions that we have. Right. So today is a very, uh, a very important and a very uh, significant day for us, uh, you know, because we be, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, an initiative that we have, we, well, we started some time back with the National Mission for Clean Ganga. Okay, and. Uh, uh, we are so delighted and so glad that you know Ashok sir, the Director General of uh, uh, NMCG, and uh, Mathuria sir, who's the Executive Director Technical from NMCG, are here with us today. Thank you, thank you so much, sirs, for joining us. Uh, so this initiative was um, uh, was sometime back in 2019, uh, where the idea was to promulgate river-sensitive development, you know, in our cities, right? So uh, what I will do now, uh, you know, I have a very brief presentation, you know, just to set the context, to tell you a little bit about um, uh, what this whole thing is about, uh, and more importantly, you know, where are we now going ahead, you know, with uh, in the River Cities Alliance and with the urban agenda, you know, for uh, for NMCG here. Right. So. Uh, yeah, to give you a little bit of a context, right? So uh, I, I told you that you know we we started this project in 2019, uh, and the the intention, if I had to just summarize this in one slide, uh, was to get from point A to point B. You know, get from a place where we have uh, neglected rivers in our cities, you know, to a place you know where the rivers are celebrated, right? Okay, and this thought was also echoed very prominently by, or emphasized very prominently by, by the Prime Minister himself, you know, in the, uh, in the meeting of the National Ganga Council, where he kind of mentioned that there is a need for new thinking in our river cities in India, right? So we took that up and you know, we thought, okay, let's now start working on that new direction that the Honorable Prime Minister has uh, and, and make some headway into that as well. Right, uh, so when we uh, talk about new thinking and when you talk about making that transition from here to there, uh, and I'm sure you realize that, you know, this is not something that can happen overnight. Uh, you know, uh, we are probably not looking too much at end, at end of pipe solutions, okay, but we're looking at transformative solutions, you know, reimagining the way things are done in the Indian cities, right? Uh, and, and that transformation, you know, uh, is, is, is something that is, is relatively new, right? So the thinking in that regard is relatively new in India, uh, and our whole work has been actually uh, on 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 driving that agenda for this new thinking here. Right. Uh, so one of the fundamental things that we, you know, we started to attempt or started to point out, right? Uh, traditionally or conventionally, when we talk about river management in India, uh, the only thing that comes to mind is is this, right? Uh, and that is essentially on controlling the pollution, right? So for a very long time, even NMCG, you know, uh, the, the, the much of the focus was on infrastructure, you know, augmentation of infrastructure, which is important, and I'm, I'm not contesting that or not undermining the importance of that. Right? Okay, uh, but I think when we look at river management, you know, uh, uh, there is a need to move away from, you know, just a pollution management approach to a holistic management approach. Right? So where pollution control is certainly, you know, one of the elements, certainly one of the tenants uh, of the management core, uh, but there are other things that we need to look at as well. We need to look at the social aspects. We need to look at the economic aspects, right? So this essentially is that new thinking that we are trying to promulgate, trying to propagate, you know, in, in our Indian cities this way, right? 
So as part of, so when, when you talk of any new thinking, right, and I'm sure you would agree with it based on the kind of work that you've been doing, right? So this is a typical pathway, uh, you know, whenever we want to implement something new, right? Uh, so you create an enabling environment, you know, in terms of policies, in terms of strategies, right? Uh, then you have the institutional arrangements in order to kind of anchor, you know, that those policies and kind of give it some teeth, you know, for it to be facilitated. Uh, and finally, there are these management instruments, right, which actually help in rolling out, you know, any new initiative or any new thinking right so we also began to start our work in this regard so when it comes to enabling environment you know uh, the NIUA NMCG collaboration we came out with these new frameworks uh, until now they were not there right so how do you actually manage uh, urban river stretches you know in a particular city uh, we always talk about rivers as a as a basin approach right and then we get stuck there but cities are the smallest unit at which actions can take place so what exactly should cities be doing you know, for the management of the rivers. And we'll be hearing a little bit more about that later on today in, my, in the presentation that my colleague Rahul will make, right? Likewise, you know, we also thought that it is important to integrate river thinking into the planning process itself. A and one of the strongest documents that a city has, which is legally binding, is the master plan, right? So how do you actually make river sensitive master plans I is something that we wanted to also. Uh, so, so the idea was, you know, create those enabling frameworks, create those tools, uh, you know, create those, um, uh, uh, those instruments that, that cities can use uh, and also implement here. Likewise, when it comes to management instruments, right, you know, so uh, there was a plethora of products that we came up with uh, purely from the perspective of getting things done on the ground. Uh, like what you see is the water body diagnostic tool, you know, the first one that you see, right? Uh, so until now, we have standards for river water quality, um, uh, but somehow we don't have too much, you know, uh, information in terms of how to measure the health of ponds or lakes, right? So here was a nice product that we developed, which is online, which is digital. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit more in the afternoon session. But here, the point I'm trying to make it, uh, make here is, you know, while we were very successful, uh, well, maybe I'm being a little uh, prejudiced here, but, but while we, we did a fairly decent job at the enabling environment aspect and the management instruments, okay, so one area where we thought we should really work on was the institutional role. So I think the, the premise of our institutional arrangement was that uh, there are a number of cities in India that have actually done some stuff some interesting stuff when it comes to urban river management, right? You know, you have Aurangabad, uh, you know, you have Gwalior who's done a wonderful mapping of all their, uh, uh, all their groundwater uh, levels. Uh, you have uh, Ayodhya who's prepared a fantastic urban water management plan, right? So the idea was, you know, get all these river cities together onto one platform where they can actually learn from each other. Uh, where they where they leverage on each other's skills, okay, and then uh, you know get inspired you know, to do more stuff on urban river management, right? So that is the that is the philosophy, or that is the heart at, that is at the heart of the River Cities Alliance that we have developed, right? So if you have the knowledge, let others light their candles in it. It's a wonderful saying by uh, Margaret Fuller. So uh, this undermines the philosophy of what the River Cities Alliance is, right? So we established this River Cities Alliance as a platform, you know, for cities to come together, have concerted discussions, uh, and, and more importantly, get inspired to bring about a change uh, in the state of urban rivers in their own cities, right? So that was established in 2021, right? And uh, in just over a period of a year, or maybe a year or three months, 15 months or so, uh, that now network has expanded from 30 cities uh, to close to 111 cities. I think the latest count is 111. Just yesterday evening, I got a letter from uh, the commissioner of Itanagar as well, sir. They also want to join uh, the River Cities Alliance, right? So I think this is uh, uh, it's, it's just uh, uh, evolving. You know, I think cities are now beginning to realize that there is good value in, in, in being attached to the River Cities Alliance. And I'll just tell you why. While it is, of course, a platform, you know, for river cities, you know, to come and meet together, uh, they're coming. <coughs> Trivandrum was there. So this is the slightly uh, uh, latest one. Yeah, I mean, old, older ones here. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, like I said, you know, so uh, it's not just that they're here, you know, the river cities are there to, uh, you know, to share knowledge, which is, of course, a very core element of it. But there are a number of other benefits that these cities get, right? So they get technical guidance on certain aspects, you know, on which they need. Uh, you know, uh, it was just somewhere last year in, in West Bengal, there's a city called Hugli Chinsura. Uh, they wanted some advice on how to develop their river and islands. Well, these islands that are there, you know, it's a braided river there, right? 
so likewise uh, you know there is capacity building in the alliance provides a lot of capacity building you know with of course wonderful support from nmcg uh, on diverse areas on different aspects uh, of uh, uh, on different topics where the cities have the need actually right uh, there are bilateral exchanges you know i think one of the best forms to uh, to build capacities is to have that have those bilaterals so we are trying to promulgate we are trying to encourage that also uh, uh, this year as well right uh, and uh, the, at some level, you know, we also uh, provide some guidance or some advice on funding because that is where, uh, you know, typically, you know, the you know the boat stops, right? So it, it gets stuck because of lack of funding. Uh, now, while NIUA and NMC, we're not really a funding organization, okay, but we certainly have the the uh, the know-how and we can share that know-how with cities in terms of how they can actually access funding, not just national but also international funding as well, right? So I think these are the features that actually make you know the uh, the River Cities Alliance uh, a little bit more attractive, and that is why you saw that transition you know uh, in 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 terms of the numbers from uh, a, from a mere thirty to currently one hundred and eleven or so. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, this is just to show you some pictures of, you know, uh, like I said, since a core aspect of the River Cities Alliance is for them to come together and you know, have discussions. So this was the meeting, the first meeting of the River Cities Alliance that was held in Pune uh, this year, 13th and 14th of February. And these are some glimpses of, uh, uh, you know, how, uh, how things went. Uh, and we were so uh, delighted and so um, uh, happy to have the presence of, you know, both our ministers, the Minister of Jal Shakti as well as the state Minister of State for the housing and urban affairs as well. Yeah? In addition to a lot of senior uh, officers from both NIUA and NMCG and across different ministries as well. Right. right. So, uh, you know, just to come to what we are trying to do today, right. So see, uh, one of the things that we have, like I said, you know, so we have started off with this initiative of creating the River Cities Alliance. Uh, there are currently 111 cities. Uh, but what we realize is, you know, that the, the demand in the cities is huge, right? So as one, you know, so we have a number of partners here. So we want to kind of explore with you. This is a very uh, first meeting, a very initial dab or an initial conversation in that regard in terms of, you know, how we can collaborate together, you know, to support the needs of the River Cities Alliance, right? So, so that is number one. You know, we have embassy partners with us uh, to see where are the possible avenues. You know, and, and I think when Sumit comes and leads those discussion, you know, we in, we'd also encourage you to uh, to uh, to think and, and let us know. You know, where are the possible entry points for us to work together, right? Because that that I think is is important because only NIU and NMCG will not be able to do that. Okay, I think we'll need a host of partners to kind of uh, you know to work together on this. Uh, and number two is. Uh, uh, again, this is when uh, Ashok sir was in New York uh, last month, you know, so, uh, so he also presented the idea of the River Cities Alliance, you know, in, in the UN Water Conference. Okay, and there was a lot of traction from international cities as well, right? So the idea here is also now to create a premise through this meeting and that will happen in the second half uh, of the day, you know, when, you know, the cities, the time zones match, uh, you know, bringing them on board and try to create, introduce them to the River Cities Alliance and perhaps uh, also uh, hope to inspire some of them to join the alliance, you know, when they see the value uh, in, in what this alliance would be, right? So pretty much two things, you know, that we would like to uh, uh, cover in this in this uh, in this day long workshop today uh, it's going to be a little bit of an informal affair so which is why you don't see too many you know fancy chairs or something in the front right uh, so we would um, uh, it's also going to be a lot interactive there's going to be minimal presentations but we'll get a lot of feedback from you uh, and more importantly hope to leverage on your work that you're already doing uh, and count on your support right so thank you thank you so much for joining uh, us once again and on behalf of nmcg and niua uh, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts uh, and we look forward to a, a wonderful round of uh, you know wonderful day of discussions with you thank you thank you so much yeah right so I think, um, uh, you know, now that the context is set, you know, we would uh, really like to hear, you know, from, you know, uh, uh, you know, one of our strongest supporters uh, for the River Cities Alliance, and that is the Director General for uh, Namami Gange. Uh, so I'd like to invite, you know, Ashok sir here, you know, to please come and deliver this keynote address, sir. Ashok sir, please. Thank you, Victor. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, nice to be with uh, the River City Alliance because uh, this alliance, which we started uh, about a year and a, maybe a year and two three months back, with a small motley number of 25, has grown into 111. 
and we have also got international partnership and and more than that it is the interest which uh, we could generate in in, in this topic so uh, welcome uh, to all of you for this uh, meeting this is uh, as uh, victor said this is the starting point because many things start as an idea and then grow as the rivers are small rivulets <coughs> the rivers are formed by gully water flowing from the gully is going to rivulets and then rivulets becoming streams and then becoming bigger rivers and then bigger rivers and big rivers so this is the trickle which started in uh, 2021 or 19 in fact the idea was there we started the urban river management plan and then this is going up um i would like to uh, <coughs> uh, uh stress upon the importance of two things one is the issues related to climate change and as well as the uh, the urban water management and that's where we uh today as urban planners also have to have a very very serious challenge at our, on our hand um today if you look at it the climate it should have been very hot extremely hot now but it's a, you have a switzerland like ambience here we have good good climate that's good anyway but that is a part of climate change we never expected that uh, in may we'll have such a very beautiful climate and you have to wear coat or <coughs> even use blankets in the night so that is a reality even though we may enjoy it now i don't know we uh, what is in store for us in the next couple of months i hope uh, they skip the summer and go straight to the rainy season but ch- climate change is a reality um and uh, many of us who are here have gone to foreign countries and then when we come back and make our posts in fb uh, in and instagram and all we put the photographs of re- boating in river thames re- re- boating in sand river etc etc whereas can we do that in india boating in river yamuna in delhi or boating in musi river in hyderabad hardly exists so there is a tremendous need to pick up that that type of quality of life which the uh, global uh, cities are enjoying because of transforming river as a major source of economic growth major economic growth engine or even a so uh, as place for entertainment aesthetics etc etc so um, the when the river city alliance was formed with 30 states 30 cities on the banks of rivers because not all cities have the privilege of having a river flowing by we thought we should expand it to all the rivers uh, all the cities in this in the country not confine ourselves to the ganga basin and try to rope in um, cities on the banks of all rivers in the country and that's why we expanded the scope from ganga basin to all states so we have hyderabad trivandrum chennai all come joining in with us pune and that's why we had the <coughs> dhara meeting the first meeting of the river city alliance in pune in february you saw the pictures so um, we we were very enthused with the response we got from the city planners because generally city planners do not think water as their subject because water is something below their dignity because they talk about uh, metro highways they talk about uh, flyovers they talk about uh, entertainment parks they talk about uh, um, uh, rapid mass rapid transport etc etc but water is something below par for them but now everyone is waking up to the reality that if you treat it with contempt is going to back back to you water is becoming very important and at a very exponential rate there are cities who are going to close down because there's no sufficient water supply there are cities which have been affected very badly because of the improper treatment of the wastewater improper disposal of the wastewater there are cities which are going to lock down because of the non availability of good drinking water 
we have committed towards the SDG goals of equity, uh, equal uh, access to safe drinking water, <laughs> equity of water distribution to everybody, democratization of water supply, etc. Et These are all lofty terms. But then the reality there is that in the UN World Conference, many people were telling that we are far away from trying achieving the goal of uh, uh, kept at 2030. So in this sector, the visionary leadership of uh, Honorable Prime Minister, when he took over charge as Prime Minister in 2020, uh, 2014, starting off with the Swachh Bharat Mission, which in turn is a very big boon to, 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 to ensure the good quality of water because water gets polluted with the open defecation and when we started drive to end open defecation in the country it is in turn affecting the supply good quality of water because from my example I can tell you when uh, we started this uh, uh, construction of toilets in, uh, in Nizambad when I was collector in 2020 uh, years back 2021-2 when I pushed for building about 1.4 lakh toilets in, in Pakka toilets in Nizamba um, pe with people's parts of Fugish course. In the next year, I could reduce the incidence of the uh, diarrhea from about uh, 5,000 to about 157. This is a tremendous improvement in the health of the people, and the people realized it after one year why this fellow was pushing for construction of toilets and reducing the load of diarrhea had tremendous consequences on their income or the savings because otherwise they have to spend a lot of money on these hassles of treating diarrhea and associated diseases and many waterborne diseases of course not only diarrhea because diarrhea was one indicator but many water waterborne diseases loss of uh, mandates going to hospital paying money to doctor it's a huge economic burden for them which they were sort of relieved because of this step of ensuring that they had toilet in their house and the open defecation was sort of completely eliminated so in the cities now with the rapid urbanization taken up a lot of people coming migrating to cities if you are not taking care of the disposal of sewage, it's a very major threat for us. Now, what was traditionally happening in any of all the cities was, all the city planners, as I said, they were busy with planning highways, they were busy with planning uh, flyovers or um, urban mass rapid transport. They left the sewage to flow into their water bodies. They let the sewage flow into their rivers. Because of the real estate values shooting up in the cities, urban areas, the builder lobbies finished off the urban water bodies in many of the urban water bodies in the cities. They, they fill it up with debris and build housing complexes and commercial complexes on it. The river what, rivers which used to flow by the city wherever they were flowing, they used to be the best content for carrying the sewage and the dirt from the city. So earlier, we used to have sewage being dumped in the cities. Now we are finding that the solid waste also is getting dumped in the cities. So their simple way, uh, so solution is that if you dump this dirt into this river flowing by, the river flows, so it will take down to the city down below, wherever it is. They are conveniently forgetting the fact that there's a city above them also, which also thinks the same way and also dumps the dirt into the river and then comes back to your place. And many of the city, these rivers flowing by are the source of drinking water. Hyderabad, I can tell you, they take water from Godavari 180 kilometers away and Krishna about 100 kilometers away. So many of the cities are taking this water for the drinking purpose from these rivers. And once the river gets polluted because of the uh, uh, because we let in a lot of uh, dirt into the river, your drinking water is getting affected. So, the 
river which should have otherwise been a very pleasant experience in our cities has become a very dirty place because the urban planners were not really concerned about improving the quality of the river or uh, water because water was never a priority of them as i said now after the prime minister has uh, pushed for the swachh bharat mission toilets have come in at least the uh, uh, the the open defecation has come down and that large volume of night soil mixed water which used to go into their water bodies has to like it's in stop then he started the uh, swachh uh, the jal jeevan mission providing drinking water to the households again that's a, another big story how is going to impact the indian women how is going to impact the rural economy how is going to impact the gdp of india because these women who is to walk kilometers to fetch water on the head will be getting water at their houses so and that is a separate topic altogether so with these two interventions actually mon prime minister modi ji has really taken on the battle of water seriously and we are actually reducing the world's burden that's what the people told in the un water conference when the when the world entire world is lagging behind in in achieving the sdg goal or completing the sdg goals uh, related to water by uh, by 2030 india is very much ahead we are construct construct about 115 million toilets and we are in the process of almost uh, 59 60% of the households in rural area are getting tap water uh, and we hope to do that 100% by about 2024 now coming back to the cities again so if we can get water and water urban water management into the into the agenda of the you know, uh, the urban planners it will be a great boon so we prepared with the help of nia the urban management plan in 2019 lot of workshops were held and then now the cities are responding because 2099 remember we prepared one for kanpur and still not implemented but in the last meeting of the uh, river city alliance in uh, in pune we got come in from from 25 cities to make urban plan and this we are planning to have uh, the urban uh, plan uh, management urban river management plan for cities from 25 cities in the state which is a big number big jump from the one not implemented in 2019 to 20 commissioners who are willing to do it for the next uh, in the next one year and as uh, victor was mentioning this is a platform for sharing ideas knowledge sharing and partnership and this is the theme which was coming very repeatedly in the un water conference in the un water conference um, when we were asked to tell about the why or what is the secret of the success of india in water sector we mentioned two important things one was most important was people's participation because we got everything through people participation and second is the whole of government approach so we were for, our minister was actually telling the uh, the president of the un uh, general assembly that the world should now work together the whole of un a whole of world approach so that the silos in which the water is divided and that's exactly what is preventing the better water management practices we should bring together the whole of government approach and people's participation to find sustainable solutions for this problem and the second thing they were telling was about partnership so these are the two major themes which resonated in the un water conference partnership and knowledge sharing so this is one of the platforms which we have made for knowledge sharing as well as a platform for building capacities and as uh, with the victor was telling transformational solutions it could be new solutions i mean yesterday i was uh, uh talking about uh, various monitoring systems to to look at the water quality river water quality so i was I mean, jokingly suggesting that it's the time of chat gpt and artificial intelligence if there are no sensors which can detect detect bod cod and all these things which they were debating about it is possible not possible it has to be a lab it cannot be a sensor i said check up whether 
you can connect something to some dolphins and then if this dolphins are squeaking that can be if they are happy about it and that that can be transformed in, by artificial intelligence to hello good water good water or something it's good for us these are all transformational thinking i'm not thinking i mean it's maybe sounds stupid now maybe i don't know maybe 10 15 years later you say that it's a good thing it may sound stupid now we have to look at out of the box solutions we have to use technology to find solutions for us we have to find sharing of ideas because one man cannot do it one woman cannot do it it has to be a cooperation it has to be cele- it has to be uh, uh, sharing of ideas it has to be working together with new solutions possible so thinking out of the box thinking together working together and then sharing the successes and best practices is this is what we should do now and that is exactly is the platform which the rca is providing now i am coming to the global rca why global we had the formation of the rca with 111 cities of the country they are coming very actively involved then there are lot of good practices outside the country many of your cities i am i am very proud that uh, to visit many of many of the cities uh, from where the, the the countries from where the dignity is present here from the embassies here most of the european cities have a wonderful river a beautiful bench to sit by the river danube rhine which are all very dirty for 10 years back 20 years back they still tell the stories of how danube and rhine were very bad people could not put their hand into it because of the fear of getting skin disease from there to a river which flows which is very beautiful which can even water which can be even drink, drinkable the transformation they have made is a lesson for us it's an inspiration for us and and also make us believe that it is possible so that's why we thought let us also partner with with the international cities who has developed it and shown it to the world that it's possible so as uh, we got the un award at the uh, uh, and the cop 15 namami gange um, uh, most of you are aware uh, had get, got the uh, award as being one of the top 10 eco restoration flagship programs of the world a very prestigious honor for us in the uh, uh, cop 15 meeting at montreal it was a message that it is possible in india too that nothing is possible because cleaning ganga was supposed to be an impossible mission in india now people accepted that it's possible people accept that the mainstream river water is clean and then so that's why we are taking the challenge of taking hindan and other kali and other rivers which are very dirty now so the 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 experience of international cities in making their cities clean in the rivers clean making good aesthetic sense improving the property values on the river basin uh, on the river front for the river front properties managing urban flooding all these have been happening in the western uh, nations in other other countries so we thought this platform should also leverage the experience of the foreign countries and that's how we have brought in international partnership here and also we have brought in funding agencies world bank adb etc here because it's good to speak and go but we also have to provide some funds the experience from denmark experience from netherlands experience from other countries who have done so well in water management particularly river water management we will have a platform for all of you to see and also give the support of the funding agencies to leverage we will not be middlemen we will only make the alliance uh, uh, for you so that it's like that uh, and whatever happens between the husband and wife later is none of our concern so we don't when something happens goes don't go don't come back and say that it is because of you we got into problem so that could be uh, uh, we are not taking responsibility that we can get you a platform where you can discuss with the funding agencies and get the funds for that so um, winding up i feel that uh, as india is is the uh, in is in its uh, presidency of the g20 which talks about one world one earth one family and one future we have to have 
solutions, experiences from other parts of the world to help to form into this one world, one earth, one family, etc. But adapt it accordingly. So I, we are not looking at copying and aping what you are doing at other places. The temperatures may be different there. The environment may be different there. The culture may be different. But nevertheless, there would be something which can be the base core activity, which we can take it up. And with your support, with your, uh, with your experience in cities in India also, can aspire to become beautiful cities with wonderful river flowing by, with uh, boating done in the rivers, uh, with uh, people going in the evening to the riverfront and enjoying the riverfront without carrying the mosquito repellent, which they do now. So probably we'll be happy to have wonderful cities, beautiful river flowing by, beautiful river properties having enhanced value because of the presence of a good water flowing river. Thanks a lot. We hope to, at the end of the evening, get something concrete out of it and see that uh, this, this, this uh, global RCA develops into a big, big event because RCA incidentally is the only organization in the world, a platform in the world for <coughs> cities in the river. So, uh, am I correct? So this is something unique. This is the only and the first organization of, for, uh, uh, of an alliance of uh, cities on the river. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, thank you very much, sir. You know, for setting those, uh, setting the context very beautifully. You know, uh, uh, just to pick up on something that Ashok sir said. You know, towards the uh, towards the end. Uh, so uh, one of the reasons, of course, why we are uh, having this discussion with embassies from different countries uh, is to see how the Indian cities can actually learn from the practices uh, that are followed in your cities, right? Uh, well, that is perhaps one side of the story. Uh, but vice versa as well, right? So I think there are some very interesting things that are happening in India, right? Uh, Ashok sir just mentioned the River Cities Alliance is first of its kind, you know, where you have different river cities coming together. Uh, this has not been attempted elsewhere in the world, right? So there are a lot of interesting things in India that we would also like to share, right? And I think this makes this, um, uh, you know, a partnership between equals, right? So I think, and, uh, and, and that is and the catch the rain, you know, the largest rainwater harvesting campaign in the world, right? So I, I think this is a this is a wonderful win-win situation in in uh, you know in, in so many ways, right? Uh, so where we get to learn and we also get to share our knowledge, you know, within that alliance. And the alliance is precisely for that, right? So thank you, thank you so much, you know, Ashok sir, for that uh, wonderful keynote address. Um, we're going to be heading into this uh, into this discussion with the uh, with the embassy roundtable soon, uh, but before that, uh, you know, we have one short presentation, you know, from our Japanese colleague, uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Kazushi Hashimoto-san, right? And this is going to be on decentralized urban wastewater management uh, that is being practiced in uh, in in Japanese cities, right? So, Hashimoto-san, uh, dozo, please. Uh, okay. Can you remind me which is your presentation? Known for its spotless streets and advanced infrastructure, some might think Japan's sanitation it model can't be that relevant to emerging Asia. This may... Oh, no, no. Oh, okay, I'll speak a little and then video, okay? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am Kazushi Hashimoto. I used to work for JICA. I had visited the Yamna River near New Delhi in 2008 before I retired from JICA. It was very polluted. Although JICA had been supporting Yamna Action Plan by extending uh, several ODA loans for the sewage system development. Therefore, it is my great pleasure that I'm giving this opportunity to present to you my recent, recent thought on river cleaning and the improvement of the centralized wastewater management system. Before my presentation, I would like you to watch a video made by ADBI 
which explains a uh, decentralized waste management system in Japan in seven minutes. So, video, please go. spotless streets and advanced infrastructure, some might think Japan's sanitation model can't be that relevant to emerging Asia. This may change upon a closer look at its uniquely evolved sanitation mechanism. Japan's close to full coverage sanitation system runs on two wheels, a centralized sewage system and Jokaso an affordable and easy to install on-site facility. And the latter model could present a possible solution for developing economies in advancing citywide inclusive sanitation. It may be a surprise, but Japan's modern sanitation history does not trace back that far. Because of the long and well-established practice of using night soil as fertilizer, it took the outbreak of cholera in 1880 for the country to fully address the need to regulate water supply and waste treatment for improved hygiene. New legislations banned discharging untreated wastewater into the environment. This paved the way for the idea of an on-site night soil treatment system that became the foundation of today's Jokaso. Then came World War II that ended in 1945 and destructed much of Japan's infrastructure, including that for sanitation. In an effort to swiftly recover and expand sanitation services throughout the country, post-war Japan opted to develop multiple sanitation models simultaneously. While populated areas started building centralized sewerage systems, Jokaso became an option in rural and suburban areas. Having these multiple options allowed municipalities to identify and implement the most efficient sanitation system for their topography. In the 1950s, Japan also brought an end to the night soil recycling system, largely due to the introduction of chemical fertilizers, further increasing the need for modern sanitation. This pressure increased further as the nation entered the economic miracle phase in the 1960s, which brought the rapid development of urban areas. The current Jokaso model that can be installed at an individual household became available in the 1980s. This Jokaso is capable of treating all the household wastewater, not just from toilet, but also from kitchen and bathroom. The Japanese government at the time began developing various legal frameworks, subsidy schemes, as well as public-private partnerships to promote Jokaso. These policies provided incentives for private companies to devise quality Jokaso products and carry out appropriate operation and maintenance. From 1987 to 2015, the government invested approximately 415 billion Japanese yen for the promotion of Jokaso. Jokaso offers many advantages as an innovative sanitation alternative. It can treat wastewater as effectively as a sewage treatment plant. It can be installed for individual houses, apartment blocks, as well as commercial facilities within a few days. And the costs are far less than that of sewerage. This is why an average of 120,000 new Jokaso are being installed across Japan every year. Standing in his sunny backyard in a rural community just north of Tokyo, Mr. Yamada describes how Jokaso enhanced his standard of living. He and his family have been using Jokaso since 2014 after the plan to extend sewerage in his community was cancelled due to budgetary constraints. Yeah. 
トイレは水洗になって大変便利になりましたし清潔になりました Beyond the comfort and convenience, what puts a smile on his face is the awareness that he is now taking part in improving water quality in the rivers in his neighborhood. 以前は台所の水、洗濯の水と川にそのまま流していたので、川を汚す犯人の一人になったんですね。ですから、非常にあの心苦しい思いをしてましたけれども、今は非常にきれいな水が流れてますので、あの鼻高高でいられます。In Japan. Jokaso installation is now mandatory when building a house outside the service area. The government has defined treatment methods and a structure that must be adhered to. Jokaso manufacturing and sales also require government approval. To promote nationwide sanitation, subsidies are available to homeowners to cover the Jokaso construction fee. Jokaso installation. Maintenance, desludging, and legal inspection must be handled by registered or approved private companies, and the operation must be carried out in accordance with the Jokaso Act that was passed in 1983. Only qualified personnel who has been trained and passed exams can engage in maintenance and operation. In the past five decades, approximately 200,000 people took the required training. And pass the exams on Jokaso related works, including installation, operation, and maintenance conducted by JECES, a government authorized institution in Tokyo. These examinations and trainings could also be taken at other designated locations across Japan. Those involved in Jokaso businesses are subjected to fine or imprisonment. If they violate the provisions of the Jokaso Act, this comprehensive operation and monitoring structure s u p p o r t the high quality sanitation that the use of Jokaso provides. Japan's innovative approach in developing its sanitation infrastructure helped get Japan where it is today a place where people enjoy high level hygiene and its health benefits. It also presents a useful policy lesson. For those involved in sanitation development in Asia and the Pacific, especially in the wake of the pandemic, which has highlighted the even more urgent need for equitable quality sanitation. Okay, finish. The video and the uh, presentation slide, please. Okay, now I will explain why the decentralized management system, wastewater management system established in Japan, is relevant for cleaning up rivers. Next slide, please. Next, please. I need to do that? Yeah. Okay. Causes of river pollution. You may agree that urban domestic wastewater, industrial wastewater, solid waste dumped to the river, agricultural wastewater, and livestock wastewater are common causes of river pollution. I would like to add one that is, the sludge from septic tanks and pit dumped to the river. Which was actually no longer a cause of river pollution in Japan 50 years ago, but it is still commonly observed in developing countries now. Among them, the most dominant cause is the urban domestic wastewater, which needs to be treated. What is domestic wastewater? It is divided into black water and grey water. In Japan, it was established that grey water, which is catching wastewater, laundry wastewater, and others, contains more than double of the pollution loads contained in the black water,、uh, that is toilet wastewater. Therefore, in Japan, 
it is a common understanding among all the water engineers that the treatment of grey water is essential to clean up rivers. And uh, this notion is duly reflected in the planning of both centralized and decentralized wastewater management system in Japan. I assume that many participants today do not believe as what I said now, that gray water is more polluted than black water. But it is true in Japan. Housewives in Japan use a lot of water and detergent to wash vegetables before cooking and uh, washing di uh, dishes. In India, too, a chef of the restaurant in big hotels may use a lot of water for cooking and washing dishes. On the other hand, my colleague, who is currently engaged in a sanitation project in a village near Baranasi, told me that in rural India, pollution load contained in grey water is not as big as in Japan. The share of grey water pollution load in total pollution load is about 50%, half and half. I strongly recommend you to conduct your own sample survey of the characteristics of domestic wastewater in India. In any case, in order to reduce the total pollution load to the river, some form of grey water management, management is necessary. Specific measures to be taken may vary depending on the situation. Nature-based solutions, such as constructed wetland, may treat grey water if it's concentration is not as high as in Japan and the land is available. If not, you need a sewage system or a high performance on-site system such as Jokaso in Japan. Yeah, I believe Japan made a huge effort for reducing uh, river pollution. In the densely populated areas, a lot of sewerage systems were built in accordance with comprehensive basin-wide planning of sewerage system. In addition to this centralized system, the decentralized wastewater management system based on the Jokaso technology, which can treat both black water and gray water, has been developed and promoted, as you have seen in the video. This slide shows how much Japan spent for cleaning up rivers in the past 50 years. In the fiscal year 1998 alone, Japan spent 40 billion, not million, 40 billion US dollar for sewage work investment, which was roughly equivalent to 1% of Japan's GDP and was equal to Japan's defense budget at the time. Cleaning up river is a serious business. Based on Japan's experience and my own experience in developing countries, I would like to present my six thoughts on the river cleaning up in developing countries. I believe you, all of you agree that comprehensive planning is necessary for cleaning up rivers. My second point is that grey water management is essential for uh, cleaning up rivers. Even the decentralized wastewater management system needs to incorporate grey water management. Third point, the high performance on-site system such as Jogoso in Japan is good, but it requires the comprehensive management system as explained in the video. Number four point is that, again, high performance on such systems such as Yokasu in Japan costs money, especially for its operation maintenance. Therefore, people's willingness to pay and the affordability to pay needs to be considered prior to its introduction. My personal opinion is that in developing countries, it would be realistic to start applying such systems for commercial users and institutional users. 
These users decide large volume of wastewater and it is to be treated. It is a common practice that the larger the discharging volume, of the tighter the effluent regulation. Number five, household users will continue to use their septic tank or pits. Now from the viewpoint of river pollution, they have two problems. Firstly, uh, pits, uh, septic tank or pits are pollution source rather than treatment facility. Secondly, if there is no proper sludge management system, the sludge accumulated in them, which contains large pollution load, will be dumped to the river. In other words, if you can establish functional fecal sludge management system, it would improve the river water quality to some extent by reducing the volume of on-site sludge dumped to the river. And my final point, my last point is about the sewage system. You may imagine uh, such sewage system in which all the houses in the sewer area are connected to the sewer. But in reality, it is not. It is not true. In most of South Asian countries, Southeast Asian countries, their sewerage system is intercepted sewerage system, in which the domestic wastewater is decided to the existing rainwater drain and is intercepted just before it is decided to the river by the interceptor sewer and is treated. Under this system, interceptor sewerage system, each house is continue to use septic tank or pit and their sludge is usually not managed properly. And the accumulated sludge continues to be dumped to the river, compromising the effects of the sewer system. So the message would be, even in the sewer area, fecal sludge management needs to be strengthened. I prepared the remaining parts of my slide, but they are already explained in the video, so I will skip them. I hope somebody will uh, distribute the copy of this. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Hashimoto-san, you know, for that uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, we are now going to break, uh, you know, maybe a 15-minute break, you know, just to get some coffee into us, uh, so that we have enough energy and enthusiasm, you know, for the uh, for the round table that is going to ensue after after the coffee break, right? So I'll invite you to please. Uh, is there something? Oh, there are mementos. I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah so. Uh, Uh, Hashimoto-san, if I can just invite you here, we want to give you a small memento, okay, uh, as a token of our appreciation for taking the time out. And he came all the way from Tokyo, you know, so that's that's so nice of him. Yeah. <laughs> and may I invite uh, Ashok sir uh, to please, uh, you know, uh, hand out the memento to him, please. Thank you, thank you, Hashimoto-san, and thank you, Ashok, sir, for that, right? Yeah, so like I said, sir, uh, what we can do is we can proceed to the, to the corridor here and you know, have some coffee, uh, and, and we'll reconvene here in this hall at, in around 15 minutes or so. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. I have that uh, STP, we can continue playing. Uh -huh, sure, sure. Yes, so we'll have to give it there, sir. Uh, I'm स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे हम स्वच्छ 
स्पर्श करेंगे जय जय गंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे स्वच्छ करेंगे स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे हम स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे हम स्वच्छ करेंगे हमको पाला है तेरी उंगली पकड़ चलना सीखा जीवन तूने ही संभाला है तेरा कर्ज चुकाना है हमको कर्तव्य निभाना है हमको
microphone, please. Yes, great. Okay, we are about to start in five minutes. Uh, we'll be starting in five minutes. I'm just going to request people to start coming in. Please feel free to bring your cups of coffee inside, and that is perfectly fine. Right, so another five minutes we're going to start. I think nobody's hearing me. <laughs> Fantastic, okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Please, thank you. Great, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so we're going to start another three to four minutes. Uh, I'm just going to invite our wonderful guests to please join us. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. We're just going to start. Uh, Sumit, are you around somewhere? Right. Hi. Right. So the next next part of the discussion today, you know, is going to be moderated by by my colleague Sumit, whom I'm just trying to locate. Is he here? Okay, here he is. Right, so uh, Sumit, we'll just wait for two minutes and then we'll get people to join. Okay, so in the meanwhile, you can just get yourself set up, right? Right, and, and this is an interesting, you know, where we would like to now get your feedback, a little bit of your perspectives into uh, a way you could kind of be associated, you know, with, with the Alliance, with the River Cities Alliance, right? So we'll just take a minute uh, and I'll, I'll go out and uh, direct people in and then, you know, we can, we can start in a minute or so, yeah? Sumit, all, all yours. Thank you. Thanks, Victor. Ashab. If I may request everyone to please take your seats. Thank you. A uh, very warm welcome to all the delegates and the participants uh, today at the RCA Global Seminar. And um, as others have mentioned before, before and specifically the focus uh, today is that of disruption. We live in an era of disruption and the model that, is, that you see in front of you, the city to city collaboration model, is actually a disruptor. Why? Because no one body is capable, as uh, Honorable the DG sir mentioned, no one body is capable of building transformation or creating the transformation avenues. Hence, today we are all here for creating and enabling the transformation, the partnerships and the collaboration that will happen in the future, specifically in the realm of river cities. I request my colleague to please um, um, play the video, which sort of uh, encompasses the vivid diversity along the rivers, uh, specifically the work that is being done by Namami Gange. Um, just a glimpse for our uh, colleagues here as to what is going on currently. Thank you. Sadiyo se akshun. हमारी सभ्यता जिसकी धुरी है गंगा हिमालय की पर्वत श्रृंखलाओं से बंगाल की खाड़ी की यात्रा निरंतर तय करती आ रही है ये नदी मात्र का ढाई हजार किलोमीटर से अधिक इक्यावन जिले साठ करोड़ लोगों और असंख्य जीव जंतुओं की जीवन रेखा गंगा वास्तव में हमारी संस्कृति की जननी है 
नमामि गंगे तथा इंटैक के संयुक्त प्रयास से गौमुख से गंगा सागर तक एक अनूठा शोध संकलन किया गया जिसके अंतर्गत गंगा की प्राकृतिक एवं सांस्कृतिक विरासत को जनमानस के माध्यम से समझा गया आइए निकल पड़ते हैं एक अनूठे तीर्थ पर इन्हीं तथ्यों को जानने और अनुभव करने गंगा की गहराई गंगा जी आ, हमारे देश के एक अटूट हिस्सा है हमारे ट्रेडिशन में उसका इसका बहुत आ, एक बड़ा स्थान है सो राइट फ्रॉम पाटलिपुत्र वेयर दी नर्मदा यूनिवर्सिटी एक्सेट्रा इज वेयर टू टू दी मॉडर्न दी प्री प्री इंडिपेंडेंस एज देर आर मेनी फोर्ट्स बैटल फील्ड विच है ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ दिस रिवर साथ ही साथ आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस हमारे जितने भी नए नए शहर बसे हुए ये सब ऑन दी आर ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ इट सो इट इज वेरी क्लोजली एसोसिएटेड विद दी प्री हिस्टोरिक हिस्टोरिक एज वेल एज दी दी मॉडर्न सिविलाइजेशन ऑफ इंडिया
की धारा कैसे मैं देखू संतान माना है तुझे माए धर्म है मेरा मैं तुझे तेरा वो I mean, that uh, short clip just emphasizes the incredible diversity, the, the heritage of our cities and which constitute the, the River Cities Alliance. I mean, they're the drivers of innovation, the disruptors and the, and the, and the key elements for the incredibly operational transformation. Hence, the RCAs, uh, as Victor mentioned previously, the goal of the River City Alliance is to enable a platform to learn from each other and provide an opportunity to partner with each other and drive the movement for sustainable management of rivers. In, indeed, I mean, the key to a su successful partnership is undoubtedly collaboration. And hence, today we are all here to understand how this collaboration can lead to meaningful outcomes. This is the first step, as uh, Dijisa mentioned, the first step of the many which will go forward in the city to city collaboration for rivers. I would now like to open up the floor to our honorable uh, delegates from embassies and uh, request um, some, uh, Ruchi, if you may share the mics. Uh, A, the first, I uh, uh, would like to learn, understand from you. A, uh, what, do, what do you think your understanding of the partnership and possible areas of collaboration, specifically keeping um, the um, the different alliances that we have individually, both in terms of uh, the countries as well as with regards to cities. Thank you. Uh, Martina, uh, 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 request, Dirk. Dirk, uh, good morning. Would you uh, be sort of, Dirk has just joined us from the embassy of uh, Germ German embassy. Dirk, if you'd like to share your thoughts, please, on that. Thank you. Okay, very good morning. Uh, my name is Dirk Steffes N. I'm Deputy Head of Development Corporation at the German Embassy. So India is the most important bilateral partner for German uh, cooperation. And uh, we have a large portfolio in, in our urban, uh, sustainable urban development uh, uh, area. We have also our support for the Ganga rejuvenation, the India's mission uh, to, to clean Ganga. So, in terms of numbers, a rather small uh, uh, contribution of our overall portfolio, but it's a very, very important um, area which is goes very much to our heart. So we are very committed and um, uh, we welcome the uh, establishing of the River Cities Alliance. We find it's a very valuable um, thing that can complement uh, the activities that are already going on under India's uh, initiatives. and. Uh, I'm happy to announce that within our ongoing cooperation, we are very much willing uh, to support this um, uh, River City Alliance. Mm -hmm. I myself come from a rural German um, area at a large river, at a major river, the Mosel, and uh, I'm very much aware that in the end it's uh, the local entities uh, that are responsible to deal with all the problems and you have to work hand in hand with the larger plants and the management plants. Uh, to bring it into effect. So uh, this River Cities Alliance is a very uh, sensible uh, um, uh, issue and uh, I think uh, there's a lot of opportunities in it. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much for your kind thoughts. Um, Anitha, would you like to share a few words? Yeah. Anitha is from the Danish Embassy, please. Yeah, thank you. And uh, 
we are very happy for this alliance and just to say back in Feb, one of the cities of Denmark, city of Aarhus, joined the River Cities Alliance and we have been there from the beginning of the journey. And as uh, I'm going to present also a little later, that the green strategic partnership between Denmark and India, where water is one of the very focus areas. So we are collaborating with India on, on all these aspects of water, whether it is cities or rural, because water knows no boundaries and water is for life. So, so we are like both with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and with the Ministry of Jal Shakti, and especially National Mission for Clean Ganga, really collaborating a lot. And, and we, we want to be a part of this and, uh, and a couple of cities are also presenting in the afternoon. So, yeah. Great, great to hear about the exciting uh, way for the road ahead. Thank you, thank you Anita. From the uh, Netherlands Embassy, uh, Mr. Joost is here. Joost, if you'd like to uh, share your thoughts, please. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, can, I, can you hear me? Is it working? Yeah, oh, is okay, good. Yeah, no, thank you so much uh, for um, inviting me and having me here. Um, yeah, Netherlands is, uh, is, 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 is more or less uh, water. Um, all the um, big cities we have have developed, um, you know, on rivers. Um, all the major cities in the world have been developed on, on, on rivers. Major cultures have been developed on rivers, like here in India on the Ganges. Um, our capital is on a river, uh, Rotterdam is on a river. So yeah, rivers and cities is uh, one um, of a kind and it's just a, a unity, it, it belongs to each other. And I, there's no, not even a chicken or an egg, but I think you know, if there's no river, there's no civilization developing. So um, um, yeah, so the River City Alliance is a fantastic uh, idea. Um, I'm, I'm sure that the Netherlands has a lot to share. I'm sure that there will be interest in the Netherlands. We haven't so far identified any city to uh, to join, but that will come in, uh, in due time. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this uh, exchange of experience and um, how we can um, further help uh, cleaning up uh, and the, 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 the Ganges and other rivers in, in India. Um, and I think it's also uh, very relevant that we see that you know we have a strategic water partnership with India. We um, at our first joint uh, working group with the ministers, um, there's so much work still to do, and also uh, you know the, against the background of uh, the climate change and the melting down of the glaciers. Um, yeah, I, I think we have to be very careful, and you know we have to save every drop of water we can. But because uh, before you know, uh, I mean um, everybody is in, uh, in, in in dire problems. So yeah, I think it's it's very uh, very urgent. And um, but as you all, let me also say, you know, um, if you go to Amsterdam and uh, in the 60s, um, our beautiful uh, canals in the city were just sewage systems, right? So there was no sewage treatment. All the solid waste went into the canals, and what we did was just you know opening every day the canals and we flushed them out with fresh water just to clean it up. So. And, and, and then, you know, in the 60s, it, it, it started re the realization of, you know, environment that came in. And I, I think uh, one of the things also, uh, one of the, the good instruments we have is just raising also awareness among the people, you know, how to deal with the natural resources. There are many things, but I, in the Netherlands it started with that. And, and then, you know, the development started. Okay, let me stop here. Uh, there's so much more to say, and uh, I'm looking forward to... Uh, being part of the River Thank City Thank you very much, just, I mean, those very encouraging words. Thank you so much. Um, next, I'd like to uh, request Mukul from FCDO if, uh, to just to share his observations, please. Thank you, Mukul. Thank you, Sumit. Can you hear me? Is it? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, UK experience, uh, I think many of us would be aware of the Thames, which was once upon a time a very dirty river. Started to sort of clean it in 1976. It's now a case study. Uh, not to say uh, that it is uh, the clean, it is the cleanest uh, river around, but uh, we still face challenges there, uh, and there is a lot to do. So my point, the point I'm making is that it's a continuous process, uh, and uh, we had an experience with things, and uh, Manchester, of course, is presenting in the afternoon. Uh, so we learn from their experience. Uh, very happy to, very happy to share that experience. Uh, and uh, you know, 
form whatever collaboration uh, that we should form with RCA. It's a great initiative, uh, and uh, I really compliment you uh, for that. And now lots of expertise uh, exists in the UK on river basin management, flood management, and resilience, uh, and all that sort of thing which we can uh, bring uh, here to India. Uh, and uh, we'll be sort of happy to support any initiative uh, going forward. I think I'll stop there. And Thank you very much. We were very, very uh, happy to hear from that for the, on the collaboration front. So, <coughs> I would, uh, Shine, if you would like to have a few words, please, from you. Shine is from the, uh, his attache from the Embassy of Austria. Thank you. Does it work? Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, to be honest, there's not much I can I can add to my to what my previous speakers and colleagues have already said. Um, well, I say that there's a lot of expertise in Austria as well, as you know, um, not just the Danube that flows through Austria and a, and a load of other countries. Um, so there's not just uh, particular expertise in how to have this have a sort of local water management, but also looking towards um, trans boundary um, water issues, is, um, uh, there's a lot of expertise there in Austria as well. Um, um, there's also, uh, Vienna is also the host to the International uh, Commission for the Protection of the Danube, um, of which I understand there's a lot of uh, collaboration going on with the uh, NMCG already. Um, when it comes to more bilateral cooperation, I believe that there's a lot of interest uh, in Austria. We've not fully identified uh, clear avenues yet, but we'll make sure um, that all the knowledge about this uh, great initiative will be shared and that there will be uh, closer collaboration in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Austria. In fact, yeah. I would like to uh, announce that, you know, um, thank Austria because uh, there is, um, the Bank of Austria had been funding many of our projects, not directly with NMCG. With the HAMP projects, uh, I think two of them are being now funded. Uh, so it's a very um, uh, interesting uh, uh, partnership, not directly with NMCG, but they are ha having faith in the programs of NMCG and uh, funding the concessioners who are taking the projects in India. So also look at the other uh, countries. If the banks are also interested to finance uh, the projects, uh, we'll be happy uh, to p give a platform for them. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Digital. I think, yeah, the, part the partnership uh, and support from, with respect to the HAM project, specifically from the Austrian Bank, has been a very unique and recent one. So, yeah, I mean, that's again another model of collaboration. Thank you. Um, Disa, we, I think, broadly agree that there's a support for the RCA and specifically the initiatives and the larger rounds of uh, innovation that is to come forward. With this, uh, I'd just like to request Isa to uh, present uh, the mementos for our guests today. Uh, if we can start with uh, Dirk, please. Thank you. Uh, next, Joost, uh, please. Joost, please. Yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Anita. Mukul, please. Uh, who else was there? Uh, Shine. Thank you. I think we're We've just ended one minute before the uh, scheduled thing. So, um, Anisa, if I'd like to invite you, please, for the presentation for the India-Denmark partnership with the case study of uh, Udaipur and Aros collaboration. Please, thank you.
Right, sir. Uh, Rishabh, if you're there, anywhere, there's TP video, please. Yes, I think One, the video, the D sir had given. We ha we have one minute, so additional. <laughs> That's fine. We have started reimagining STPs as uh, Nirmal Jal Kentras. Uh,
transformation from from dirty, smelly sewage treatment plants to beautifully painted, good smelling Jal Shakti Kendra. Oh, sorry, it's not Jal Shakti, it is uh, Nirmal Jal Kendra. Nirmal, Ke Nirmal. Nirmal Jal Kendra. Jal Shakti Kendra is another one which was uh, started in the districts. This is Nirmal Jal Kendra. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. So that is wonderful. Uh, that's actually transformation in action. Nisa, if you can please just come over and I'll lead you to it. So these are the movement for the slides. slides for the slides. This one? This, one? Yeah. this, one? this left and right. Uh, starting? They will start it? Oh, it's there. Yeah, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to share this city-to-city -city cooperation between the city of Aarhus and city of Udaipur. That is exactly what this River Cities Alliance is trying in future too. And just for the information, actually the city of Udaipur is one of those cities that are not on the Ganga belt but was selected already in the first phase and in that way the city of Aarhus also came. But as I just briefly said, India and Denmark, they entered into this grand strategic partnership back in 2020, where water is one of our very focused areas. And both the Prime Minister of uh, Denmark, Mr. Mete Ferguson, visited India, and uh, Modi ji visited Denmark. And you can see the water body that uh, is there behind the, the both Prime Ministers shaking hands. That is what the, the collaboration is about, what I'm going to talk about today is that this green strategic partnership, just a brief introduction, it contains like 11 different topics where water is one of our focus areas and the other is the energy. And, and it is like both the government to government approach, that is what we are having, the whole of the government. And then the other like trade and, uh, and the research and investments that are there too. So if you take this uh, case study of Udaipur or Aarhus, it is actually on this sustainable urban water management. The, the collaboration started back in 2016 where both the cities entered into an MOU saying that uh, we will be working together and in 2018 we started on this smart city mission that was the mission that was going on parallelly so we tried to collaborate on that mission and the same thing because as, as you see the, the topics we are working on is the water supply, integrated water resource management planning including aquifer mapping because when you say urban water it is not just within the urban limits. You have to go beyond the limits to make the urban water sustainable and secure. So, so that is also very important. And then the third one is the sanitation, that means the sewage and septage management, and river rejuvenation and blue-green infrastructures. And, and, and to achieve this, you require actually policy, planning, and regulations, because without that, it is sometimes not easy to achieve your visions. So this collaboration we are taking up to the Rajasthan, state of Rajasthan in, uh, in this year actually. And here we are again uh, aligning with the, with the missions like the Amrut 20 mission, Atal Bhujal Yojana, the River Cities Alliance I have already included there, and the Smart City uh, Smart Laboratory on Clean Rivers and other projects and priorities. So, so this is the, the work of this. And I don't know whether Ashok ji and I have like a kind of a telepathy because that is what we were about to say that the collaboration is not about supporting or anything but it is about the knowledge sharing, collaboration and co-creation because as you know what the experiences that are there in Denmark may not like fully 100% you can implement into Indian context but you do the knowledge sharing, you have the collaboration, you do the co-creation and that is the mindset of this Aarhus Daipur collaboration because many people they ask me what can we go and see on ground right now, what have we implemented because to implement something you really first need to have the knowledge sharing because it is just not a transfer, it is actually a co-creation so that is what we are doing. And it is actually knowledge-based management we are doing. It is based on trust and collaboration. Many times uh, the data exchange and everything, they just say that how can we do the data exchange? We say we don't need the data, the data is yours. So we are collaborating on that so that we can co-create something. And, and the idea is that we identif identify some focus areas, the city to city, and then we do the demonstration. If research is required, we try to fund the research and then collaboration across all the sectors because as uh, the cities do not have all the different sectors because if you take water like the water resource department or Rajasthan they said that there are 13 departments that work with water and if you take the cities it will become 14 departments so water is like uh, put on different sectors so we collaborate across all those sectors and then again we have this policy planning and regulation sector 
So, so like when I mean when I come from Denmark, I say we have this triple helix model. That means you need the regulations. That means the public authorities. You need the technology, and you need the university. But when we come to India, we have the citizens too. So we have this quadruple helix model because citizen is like the core of it. So that is how we are approaching our collaboration here. And uh, again, uh, uh, Ashok ji said, just before I presented, he presented how the wastewater treatment plants are becoming these Nirmal Jal Kendras. And in Denmark, if you look at the story, back in 1980s, wastewater was looked at a nuisance. So it was the cause for the uh, bad water quality. Whereas now, we are looking at the wastewater as actually something we could do in the climate mitigation and adaptation as a resource, actually, as an energy and resource sick thing. And that is exactly what we are bringing into our collaboration there. So we have done some kind of a baseline study on how the existing wastewater treatment plants can be updated. And also an online course was established, uh, held, where actually we are also reaching out to the uh, river cities, like Varanasi also took part into this course. So it was a course like four cities from, uh, from Rajasthan and one Varanasi. So in that way, if we have these kind of things, we would very much like to invite all the cities to take part, because when it is online, many people can, can join it. So that is one of the things we could do it. And I think now I have actually my Udaipur colleagues who would like to present how we tried to rejuvenate a small stretch of river and how, how we did it. I think, uh, Bhupender, are you online? So, am I audible? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, uh, thank you for giving Udaipur uh, this opportunity. Uh, myself, Bhupendra Saladia, Assistant Manager, IP South Asia, and uh, supporting the Municipal Corporation in Climate Mitigation, Adaptation, and Climate Action Planning. So, I am also coordinating uh, the City to City Partnership on behalf of Municipal Corporation, and I am here uh, to represent uh, the city and uh, to this uh, project how we are uh, working in Udaipur. So, uh, we can say this partnership is a uh, true example of co creation, to uh, work together. So, co creation by government, uh, the local government of Udaipur, citizen, local expert, and the uh, uh, city government, uh, Arus, who already have expertise in the river regeneration through uh, nature based solutions. So, uh, I can say that uh, it is a uh, best practice. Uh, now, I am defining uh, about uh, this uh, Gomani and project. I am telling you a story that how. Uh, uh, we are going to uh, develop uh, this project. So, uh, it was started with a discussion between the uh, city authority that uh, uh, they want to a real uh, river rejuvenation. Uh, that how we can uh, uh, how we can uh, give uh, back to nature and uh, make contribution to the biodiversity. So, this was the uh, real context of to start this project. Uh, but uh, we uh, in the, the municipal, municipal corporation, we have limited expertise. So, uh, it was a real challenge and uh, Aru's team was come up with that idea that why uh, we not uh, use the uh, local expertise of the citizens who can contribute uh, on this project. So, uh, hello. Yeah, <laughs> they are trying to find the slide from actually. <laughs> okay, I thought I, I lost. Yes, so I am continuing that. that uh, so we make a group of uh, local experts uh, who uh, who expertise in plant, aqua life, architecture, civil engineer, and uh, wetland and uh, landscape as well. So that is how uh, it all started. We uh, we team up with the uh, local professor, um, and soon uh, we see that uh, the locals of Udaipur, uh, professors, architects, and uh, citizens can come up to uh, do the efforts uh, in that project and um, uh, the international expertise which we already have in this project uh, through Aru City. Uh, so that's why we uh, make a working group for that. A detailed analysis was uh, developed, uh, was uh, done uh, on the Gumanya Nala and uh, uh, we divided us, uh, this two kilometer stretch in, uh, this, uh, in the sixth zone. Uh, as per the local requirement type of uh, land availability and uh, the surroundings. And the uh, uniqueness of this project uh, that, that is that uh, biodiversity means that is include the human also. It is not just about the plant and the aquarium for the uh, wildlife only. <laughs> so then we plan a knowledge exchange visit uh, to Denmark 
so that we can uh, do uh, the work uh, uh, do do uh, do, uh, do the work together and uh, conclude uh, the design yes so uh, on, on uh, this design and this element so as you can see that uh, this is divided in uh, the six zone the smaller plan in between you can uh, see so this is a golden mala stretch which is starting with the uh, fatah sagar and the pichora lakes overflow and ending to the higher river so uh, we divide, we divided in uh, the part as urban forest promenades wetlands and uh, 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 yes and and the um, uh, and the some uh, elements of um, uh, green areas so how it was divided you can see that some areas are green in this bucket and some areas are already uh, with the um, uh, residential or commercial with the residential commercial and use so we uh, discussed in between the citizens and uh, decided that where uh, what thing can be located that um, uh, people also can feel the nature in uh, between the city so uh, i think as the time constraint i will uh, not going into the more details and uh, uh, just want to say that soon uh, we will finalize the project report and then Thank umc uh, share this proposal to the amro city so that we can uh, uh, we, we can uh, we can uh, implement it soon thank you and uh, thanks a lot bhupender yes thank you thank you lot so this is how the co creation is that it is not like coming a consultant saying that this is how we do it we involve the local i mean we we became a team actually that is what visits were done both the sides and and they made a vision of this that that it has to be the river city and the people history and architecture and heritage and climate and uh, biodiversity so another one is about this integrated water resource management and planning because the urban you re, if you have to have the water sustainable urban then you need to go beyond urban so that is how it is like so we brought the danish way of doing it because in denmark we have a model for the entire denmark so that is the is used to used to again plan the smaller cities so that is the approach we are trying to do in here so here again we have the people we have the citizen science we have the technology and we have the modeling so everything is bringing together again not as a consultancy as a co-creation because it takes time but then it will be a sustainable the same thing is about the digitalization and data because in india in amrut 20 amrut 10 i think you have defined very good standards of how digitalization can be done and in denmark we have so we again we are trying to see what is used and trying to implement that one and now uh, the last but not the least again this comprehensive urban water management we have a very good collaboration with the national institute of urban affairs on how we create this one because when amrut 2 was launched you had this city water balance plan and city water action plans but what where is this comprehensiveness in that so again we came together from both the ends like in india and in denmark where we have these five approaches and then again we are co-creating this that, that how this can be done in indian context so this is how the cities are collaborating together as a true example that that river cities alliance can take further also in the future so that is what i have to say thank you thanks a lot thank you anita i mean that was a shining example of the, actually the city to city collaboration in action thank you so much um <coughs> I'd like uh, now like to invite uh, the executive director of technical Shri D P Mathuria for the special address, please, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sumit. My greetings for the day to all the participants, delegates, guests from different embassies at New Delhi. and online participants also uh well it has been a wonderful day when we talk about river city alliance uh why it is wonderful it is important to gloss over this particular issue uh i'll start from where director general nmcg left he said that uh, the indicator of things happening and success in namami gange program has been building Uh, transforming this uh, river rejuvenation efforts into people connect movement so people had been the biggest force and second is forging ever expanding new partnership with uh, our new stakeholders as well as existing stakeholders so 
with rca uh, and with this growing family of the rca we started with the um, with the very you know humble figure of 30 at the start and we have crossed as of now 111 if i'm not wrong including arhus as one of the city partner city and i'm sure this number is going to expand more importantly it has been uh, initiative as director general said uh, whole of the government approach it has been initiative between ministry of jal shakti represented by national mission for clean ganga and ministry of urban affairs and housing represented by national institute of urban affairs so uh, and this this number as i was saying shall be increasing will be increasing we are quite hopeful now but what comes out of these numbers that is more important thing to gloss well we are we are steering and india as such is investing you know hugely on the water in the water sector but we are steering at twin challenges of water security and um, uh, um, and what we say you know climate change and both of these factors inter uh, are interlinked and are contributing to what we call uh, uh, um, uh, uh, making equitable and uh, geographically equitable distribution and supply of the water to everyone there are various facets various verticals when we talk about water security and climate change and one most important aspect happens to water management and water quality issues india does have a monsoonal kind of a you know uh, meteorological conditions so availability of water during different season happens to be an issue but equally important during the lean season happens to be the water quality and just imagine any river or drainage line which is crossing a settlement urban settlement upstream of the urban settlement you will find the river is fine it is flowing with good quality of the water and downstream the water quality happens to be um, impacted and therefore uh, uh, therefore uh, you know the government of the day <coughs> thought of investing as well as tackling this problem head on namami gange program uh, which is which is you know uh, which is uh, the main mandate uh, uh, for implementation by the mission national mission was essentially an urban centric agenda we worked we started working uh, on urban centric agenda we started focusing on those urban settlements which are abutting right on the banks of the river and tried to look at various you know technological gaps and various areas into which activity has to had has has to gone into and uh, mm, uh, when we looked into the urban centric agenda and tried to solve the problems of the municipalities that are on the banks of these rivers although we 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 adapted ourselves to manage the issues of water quality but it had not been a smart management and what what could have been the smart management would uh, come out of deliberations and these kind of partnerships and platforms through which which is enabling peer review kind of things and learning from success and failures of each one of us uh uh just now you have seen a small figure on uh, nirmal jal kendra which is a which which is another uh, you know name for sewer treatment plants uh the essence of the message is to transform the urban landscape particularly in reference to the rivers through uh, which flows to the through these settlements in the cities as well as you know lakes and water bodies and floodplain wetlands which are in these uh these water bodies now uh there the, you must have seen large number of stps having been constructed grounded uh, equally bigger number uh, shall also be coming these are bigger you know centralized kind of treatment as well as mix of decentralized kind of treatment they are addressing primary secondary and tertiary treatment uh, they are addressing the issues of uh, a very important issue which concerns as of uh, us is fecal contamination they are addressing the fecal contamination issues which is very very important and uh, but surprisingly many uh, when we when we gloss over um, uh, over the journey over the last you know 9 years or so we find that in spite of spending heavily on uh, sewerage infrastructure and assets in these municipalities and municipalities have to gloss over these facts in fact and that's why i'm mentioning it we find that still there are gaps there are cities for example and cities in ganga basin there are cities for example uh, which uh, into which uh, the investment from the government started going 
as early as 2012. And for example, Prayagda, city of Prayagda, is a very important city. Government started invest investing in the city in 2012 itself. And yet, as of now, if we count, uh, there are 76 drains out falling into Ganga. As of now, we could tap only 24. We do have a plan for tapping others also. So this is going to be a prolonged exercise. This is this is this is going to be a continuous endeavor. And uh, uh, therefore, now, uh, therefore, the point I wanted to make here was that nature-based solutions and decentralized systems sh shall be a very very important assets in our arsenal to combat this menace and this this issue of organic pollution out falling to the rivers and this has been nicely uh, presented in the presentation by our uh, f uh, by uh, mr K uh, kuzushi in his presentation and we are equally aware of it we have a running moc with government of japan on uh, on grounding jukasu technologies in various urban settlements and we have a working uh, steering arrangement through which we are taking this program forward. So, green solutions, uh, implementation of green solutions uh, to the gap areas in towns and cities to remediate the pollution, the water quality problems is an important concern and municipalities or partners have must have to look into uh, these issues while, uh, while planning and while deliberating on the master plan aspects transformation of urban landscape and there are there of uh, the water bodies and the rivers shall be incomplete until unless this entire endeavor from uh, a 360 degree view it becomes part of our master plan and uh, therefore much needs to be done as uh, we have we had discussed in uh, the last version in fact the first version of dhara which happened in uh, uh, january uh, 2023 at pune Mm, that uh, uh, and we to plan master plan for another 25 municipalities shall be taken up and these points should not be uh, missed into uh, municipalities does have their own problems and I'm sure this pl platform will offer them an opportunity to discuss those problems and probably some of their colleagues from other municipalities will offer some solutions probably they might have implemented that so this this kind of core learning will help them but Municipalities will also have to look at uh, uh, what are the assets available in their own municipalities and shall have to keep an eye on the governance of those assets. You cannot leave the assets, I mean you cannot construct a sewerage asset or any facility whether it is green or you know highly science driven facility and uh, just uh, just uh, gloss over the operation manage management um, uh, aspects of that asset. Uh, so, so uh, the municipalities and our partner uh, ULBs uh, through this forum, forum should also discuss and deliberate on operation man management paradigms insofar as the governance of these assets are concerned. Under Namami Gange program, the program has been centric, in fact it is focused on service delivery concept not on you know construction and creation of the sewerage aspects our key focus is on meeting the key performance indicator so far as quality of the uh, river water is concerned and any developer concessionaire pays for it and gets payment only after he meets those kind of uh, facilitation indicators and therefore uh, this program does support 100 per in terms of 100% uh, central in terms of 100% central grant to states and uh, does facilitates 15 year I, I mean 15 years a very very long period 15 years operation maintenance of these assets so uh, the least that uh, our ULBs can think of and do is to look at uh, uh, the sewage assets within their jurisdiction and uh, must create a uh, standard operating procedure or a uh, work philosophy to look at all those assets so that what is expected out of what we call Jal Nirbal Kendra, they really deliver the Nirbal Jal to the STPs. Uh, uh, during his uh, context setting, uh, uh, you know, brief by Mr. Victor Shinde, he mentioned that various you know technological verticals are there in fact there are many technological verticals every one of us are aware 
we have for example a, a very vibrant partnership with denmark in form of green strategic partnership we have an extremely extremely important you know uh partnership with the netherland and it is in fact a joint working group which is at the minister honorable minister level so that is the kind of uh, importance um this subject of water management holds so there are technological verticals there are guidelines available and these all there are uh, the ways and means of doing the things ahead and uh, uh, the ulbs and our stakeholders need to be aware of these guidelines uh what is in those guidelines and how those can be adapted to their own prob uh, their own problem in the in their own context i'll i'd like to uh, briefly make a mention of a very important uh, you know a mention of gis has been made by anita just now ma'am uh for example delhi 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 has a has a habit and a culture of having a master plan 10 year master plan and we have a we have a recent set of master plan also and the good thing is that this master plan does addresses river concerns does addresses the concerns of various lakes and water bodies and i must mention at this stage that this city the city of delhi used to have had about 800 water bodies and as of now about 450 of them are existing so we have lost probably lost in fact uh, so many number of the water bodies anyway so delhi does have a master plan and uh, our civic agencies our public utilities are working implementing their actions against those master plans but uh, uh, the problem happens to be grave so uh, we in fact we took a lead and together with indian institute of technology delhi we created a gs platform which houses uh, all kind of important layers that a city should have including sewerage river urban settlements sewer districts you know under interception points all kind of layers are there and we have densified this platform with real time information in terms of uh, every everything one can imagine quality of the water quality of the fresh water how much water is being supplied to the population how much is being delivered after consumptive utilization so on and so forth so we have we have populated it with the real time or near real time information although you know information um uh, i mean the extent of information is infinite but uh, we have tried to do it and this offers uh, an opportunity to look at the progress and how the system is behaving in improvement on the real time basis for anybody for the planners for the academia for somebody who is learning the subject somebody who is researching the subject and who is into the implementation and our endeavor at nmcg mission is to create such kind of platforms for uh, all the ulbs important ulbs in the ganga basin and that should become handy for looking at the progress of implementation of various initiatives and objectives in the master plan this can give, this can go away ahead i mean it can be it can just trigger a new kind of a reaction looking at uh, uh, the progress of implementation and any anything that improves that provides that kind of progress shall be speaking about the um, uh, the, the 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 quality of our uh, river systems and uh, uh, so so uh, so uh, uh, the uh, the ulbs can be aware of uh, this issue and uh, another important uh, point which i wish to make was uh, 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 we we offered uh, we offered uh, water uh, river city alliance as one of the partnership program uh, in un water conference 2023 and uh, we we i am very you know please heartening it's very heartening to learn that we sought and we enlisted support of our all almost all stakeholders and this is what is you know uh, triggering this reaction which we are seeing today and we have also uh, we have also you know um, in principle agreed to implement a a, a new kind of uh, uh, water management paradigm with uh, netherland Uh, which they call it water as a leverage and we wish to implement this uh, this concept uh, again this concept is uh, to look at water management paradigms in uh, all kind of different ways ground water surface water uh, use of gray black water the ultimate objective is to turn all these forms of water into green and blue water so and this this water as a leverage concept will also be implemented in a few selected ulbs in the ganga basin will offer a viable and a 
very proactive media to transform the urban landscape and the river landscape as such so uh, with these uh, observations i'll stop and uh, uh, mr sumit can take over thanks a lot thank you thank you sir thank you uh, for the wonderful um, look, look outlook and the way forward may I please request victor to come up on stage and uh, um, share the memento for our ms tb mathuria our executive director technical please thank you so if you may I please come on stage now um, sort of come to the core part of the rc i'm sure everybody in the room has a few questions about what exactly is the rc we've had a, a lot of uh, you know parallel and tangential questions so i'll request uh, without any delay my colleague from nia um, mr rahul sajdev to uh, briefly come on stage and uh, share his light piece thank you rahul yeah thanks sumit yeah uh, good afternoon everyone um uh, my colleague victor uh, in the morning i guess he has already touched upon you know few aspects of the river cities alliance uh, but uh, for the benefit of you know a lot of this international cities uh, who are going to present the work that they are uh, doing globally and they will be um, presenting after lunch so for the benefit of them we are just touching upon this aspects of the river cities alliance you know what has been our journey from where it started uh, what have we done till now and uh, how are we looking to take it forward so uh, with that objective uh, uh, i am uh, making this presentation so as uh, uh, again victor mentioned in the morning so it's all about you know how we uh, that a change in mindset is required from uh, not only looking uh, river rejuvenation from an you know infrastructure provision point of view not only looking at from a pollution abatement point of view but looking at wholesome rejuvenation of rivers and to that you know the call by the our honorable prime minister stating that you know the cities have to take responsibilities if we are you know really looking at uh, um, rejuvenating our natural resources in the form of rivers and its associated ecosystem so that has been you know pretty much the driver for us to kind of you know move ahead and uh, that's where national mission for clean ganga who had been you know uh, working at a basin level in ganga basin and national institute of urban affairs were working in our cities you know 4000 plus cities which are our constituencies how we kind of you know both come together and look into this entire aspect of managing with urban river stretches you know the rivers that are flowing within the administrative boundaries how cities can contribute to the overall aspect of Ma uh, managing our rivers and that's where this uh, collaboration started so in terms of the knowledge base again this urban river management is an emerging paradigm so you know a lot has been done at a basin scale but then you know for cities what kind of actions would be required to be done at a local level to create knowledge around that uh, so that's where our kind of partnership started and you know we created a, a lot of uh, knowledge base and knowledge products which i'll be talking about in subsequent slides so we did created a lot of this uh, knowledge and now to have a impact at scale so for that this uh, platform of river cities alliance was uh, envisaged in which um, river cities were onboarded and for them how we can now translate this knowledge into practice so we envisage that river cities alliance is that platform for peer to peer learning and implementing actions on ground 
so again very quickly talking about so this are the broad verticals uh, um, in which uh, namami Gang, uh, uh, national mission for clean ganga is working so if you see nirmal ganga that talks about pollution abatement so that's very much there but other than that if you see other verticals the gyan ganga uh, that's where you know we're talking creating the knowledge base on um, managing rivers at a city scale Aviral Ganga is about how to have this, uh, you know, continuous flow into the uh, rivers, how you do that. Jan Ganga, uh, as DG sir and as well as ED technical sir uh, mentioned in their talk that um, this would be, you know, not possible without connecting people to this entire movement. So, uh, how we engage communities into this uh, entire movement. And very importantly, if you see the fifth vertical, Ard Ganga how it will be you know important for cities to leverage river as an you know uh, as a natural resource and you know create economic around it so based on this verticals um, the nmcg niua partnership the overall the you know the urban agenda for urban um, cities um, um, river cities came into picture and this urban agenda essentially you know if you see there are uh, four major blocks uh, first, as I mentioned, developing tools and specific guidelines and knowledge base on different aspects of river management, um, building capacities of the cities because you know this is a new area. How they can uh, do actions on ground, uh, so building their capacities, uh, creating a network of cities, which we are talking in the form of the River Cities Alliance, and for this fostering, uh, fostering partnerships for implementation. How we can support cities in again translating this action plan into uh, actions on ground um, so again uh, victor in his slides would have touched so um, our association this are the kind of you know two major building uh, blocks with which we started uh, aimed at building cities understanding that how you know what kind of actions can be done on ground for their understanding so uh, first on the left hand side you would see is an uh, as a kind of a framework, a template for cities to follow, so that you know they can manage the city, um, uh, their river in, uh, in, a, in a sustainable manner. Uh, that's the framework that I'm going to uh, talk a little bit in detail. And on the right is the, the making river sensitive master plan, uh, strategy guidelines, because we know that uh, master plan provides a blueprint for the cities uh, for their growth trajectory. So in this you know journey of urbanization how river as an element can be integrated into their overall planning process so it kind of you know give those guidelines for cities to uh, prepare rivers centric uh, or river sensitive master plans so coming to the urmp the urban river management plan framework uh, the the vision is that if we look into you know from a sustainable development goal three broad you know verticals of environmental economy and social uh, so the urmp builds on this broad three visions that um, from an environmental perspective that the river is able to support a habitat for biodiversity to thrive from an economic standpoint the river you know provides opportunities for economic development and from social perspective that the river is celebrated among the citizen if you remember the first slide what uh, Victor showed you know from a state of river neglected rivers from a state where we want to go that the rivers are celebrated amongst the people so these are the kind of broad three um, kind of you know uh, vision statements uh, based on which uh, you see is this a 10 point agenda or the urmp objectives so this 10 objectives if you see six objectives are addressing the environmental uh, the vision statement uh, two on economy and two on social so if you look into the environmental objectives objective number two pollution free river so that's where you know a lot of action is already happening we do talk about pollution abatement but if you see a lot of other uh, objectives for example objective number one around regulation of activities in floodplain now that becomes very important at a city level that what kind of actions they do so that you know the the floodplains are protected you know the uh, the action has to uh, happen from that point onwards and this is where our guidelines on river sensitive master plan kind of come into picture which guides city into preparing their master plan as they move ahead another important objective if you see now the rejuvenate water bodies and wetlands so when we now talk about urban river management plan so river not as an isolation but river as an associated ecosystem which includes your natural drains your water bodies and wetlands so a lot of actions if a city you know does on this aspects then in a way they are also contributing into overall maintaining the health of rivers as well so in this way if you see um, if 
every city kind of you know take actions on each of this objectives they are kind of contributing um, themselves in maintaining the health of the rivers and if if we see cities from upstream to downstream if all cities they start taking action then this collective and collaborative kind of action together will um, kind of you know result in an overall improvement in the health of the rivers so that's a broad framework because this is the now entire kind of you know the skeleton uh, based on which our engagement with cities their understanding about actions on ground is kind of build up so just to give you a quick uh, um, you know uh, snapshot about what this framework is all about so if you see the objective so there are this 10 objectives which are very generic and it's applicable for all the you know river cities uh where the change would come is in terms of the intervention that a city decides that they have to take and this would depend on at what stage they are in terms of you know um their actions uh, um i would say in terms of uh, if uh, looking into your environmental aspect or the economic aspect some cities would have been you know doing very well let's say they are have a good sewerage connectivity and uh, the wastewater flows into the river is minimal so from an environmental standpoint they are doing good but there would be some city that there is no sewer system at all and they are relying on on site sanitation system but then major your sewer flows still find its way into the river and that's a major concern so this template kind of you know gives them a road map but in terms of the actions that needs to be uh, required on a local level would differ from a city to city and this interventions if you see would be a combination of uh, planning based intervention um, so for example you know they are taking a lot of uh, uh, adopting guidelines and um, um, including those as a part of their master plan and a lot of intervention would be project based you know action on ground in the same way if you see the uh, river sensitive master plan um, how a city can you know um, uh, do changes in the land use assignment that means in the flood plain what kind of land uses are permissible what kind of activities should not be allowed in terms of development control regulations what could be uh, the far that can be given or height restrictions that has to be followed so it gives a you know a kind of a step by step approach for a cities to prepare a very river sensitive master plan so based on the framework that we had prepared um, as we have discussed in the morning kanpur was the first city um, with whom we uh, prepared their management plan so on the screen you will see uh, based on their uh, local condition uh, we identified a few intervention across each of the objective so for example if you see objective number 2 intervention 2 integrate river water quality information into smart city command and control center so a lot of the smart cities now have this icc you know integrated uh, control centers so a very good idea came that now the uh, river water when enters into the city it has some quality and when it moves out depends on what kind of action city is taking the quality would change so it would be really good that if we have this monitoring data you know integrated in this command center and it becomes a very easy Uh, accessible data point for the decision makers you know it's uh, constantly this information is available to them you know relayed real time and if there is a, any red flag or is there any situation in which the quality norms are not met it becomes much easier for them to you know take actions so similarly if you see across uh, different objectives a lot of interventions were identified and uh, considering that what can be uh, done on ground so a total you know estimated budget uh, was found out that for um, implementing all this intervention and then as a part of our report we also see that uh, you know what kind of uh, financing avenues are available for implementation of this action um, when we all started everybody had this uh, apprehension that you know okay you are talking that we should have this urmp and we should do implementation on ground but where we will get the funds you know from where we will get it but if you see a lot of um, actions for which the funds are already available because national mission if you see either it is amrut smart cities mission or uh, swachh bharat mission or now if you see jal jeevan mission a lot of interventions what we are talking about they can be easily funded by this national mission other than that also you know there are various they, you have uh, ulb funds you have uh, you know uh, corporate social responsibility you have campa funds that can uh, help in uh, afforestation 
so there are funds available it's just about you know tying them together so our support to the cities is also about not only in terms of identifying specific interventions but also seeing that how this can be funded and be implemented on ground so another um, product what we have also discussed is the urban water body diagnostic tool so this kind of again uh, helps cities into make quick assessment of uh, uh, what's the condition of their water bodies so right now if you go most of the cities they don't even know how many number of water bodies they do have forget about having another next level of information that you know what's the area of this water body what's the use what's the water quality nothing so that kind of database is not there so for a decision maker to you know have this quick data on hand that for for example if they have specific funds in their hand and they want to do some action on ground you know what would be you know some of the priority water bodies that they can start with and this diagnostic tool is exactly that can help them in making those decision because um, it's very easy to use so um, the the staff there you know the uh, from uh, department uh, they can also do it and doesn't require you know you uh, third party or consultants to come and do this in a very extensive manner but these are kind of very simple actions which uh, ulb can do at their own level in the same way um, a lot of the uh, knowledge base we have created so if you see here and i will just mention a couple of them for example you know compendium of river management plan so we have studied uh, uh, plans of few of the cities and how they have uh, integrated uh, river into their uh, planning process we have put those things together um, we have a um, uh, knowledge base on eco friendly interventions for uh, riverfront development so now if you see uh, within ganga basin a lot of um, uh, cities on the bank of ganga they are going for development of ghats and river fronts so how those can be made eco friendly so it kind of you know gives them um, you know information on that so in that way you know we have created a lot of this knowledge products uh, for cities to um, kind of you know look into and now having now created this knowledge base and we now want scale that now all the cities need to take you know action one or two cities um, at their local level doing something is not going to bring about that impact but if as i mentioned you know all the cities let's say from an upstream and downstream they work collect collectively and they work on this intervention then maybe the kind of impact we are envisaging uh, you know it can happen so rca then was um, you know uh, envisioned as a dedicated platform for river cities to come together and you know learn from each other and work in a collaborative manner so it all started on november 25th 2021 uh, when it was formally launched with around 30 cities on board and if you see now as on today uh, we are now 112 uh, city strong network at 111 national cities and one uh, international city uh, rs from denmark and yeah that's where we think that um, you know we still have to you know grow because we have to reach to more and more um, you know river cities in india so that you know the kind of impact we are looking at we are able to achieve that um kind of you know what are the uh, broad thematic work areas we are working with cities so um, looking at enhancing river and biodiversity rejuvenating our rivers and water bodies um, looking into um, uh, opportunities for cities that they can you know foster river linked economy uh, mainstreaming river centric uh, uh, you know planning into their master plan process and very importantly how we bring people together so that you know rivers are celebrated among people so these are the broad thematic areas in which uh, we engage uh, with the cities and for the cities you know why you know what is there for them to be a part of uh, this uh, city alliance so um, we are providing a lot of the technical guidance because a lot of this knowledge base that has been created so it has to be shared with them so uh, we are doing a lot of this hand holding and that hand holding is by directly engaging with them uh, doing a lot of capacity building so for example we are uh, doing training programs on preparing river management plan so Uh, we do the hand holding but then cities they take up the responsibility of preparing their own plans the way they prepare a city development plan or a city sanitation plan or a city master plan in the same way they also prepare this river management plan uh, which would also kind of you know feed into a lot of the different plans that they already have in place so to kind of you know integrate all that together uh, 
RCA provides the knowledge exchange platform again because the whole idea is peer to peer learning cities learn from each other and you know that's where we provide this platform um, we uh, give uh, access a lot of these tools and frameworks they have access to this readily available information base and importantly um, we kind of you know give guidance uh, to cities uh, on funding the interventions uh, again uh, mostly how we can converge that with the na uh, national missions So um, just kind of you know coming on the specific uh, areas where we had engaged. So uh, Kanpur was the first city for which we prepared URMP. Um, uh, post uh, the form, uh, formalizing of the River Cities Alliance, you know cities uh, you know, themselves also showed interest that they would be interested in preparing their management plan. And uh, then we worked with them. And then uh, as on date, uh, we already have our management plans prepared for the city of Aurangabad, Ayodhya, and Muradabad. Um, Post lunch, uh, we'll be hearing uh, um, the city experiences. Um, um, so Aurangabad and Ayodhya would be presenting that uh, what they had been doing as a part of their ongoing efforts and uh, what has been, um, you know, there as an engagement of preparing the URMP. So they will be touching upon that uh, post lunch. Um, as I mentioned, uh, some glimpses of the capacity building programs that we do uh, on various aspects. Um, uh, we conduct the training programs. Um, and, and a lot of this now knowledge base that what we have created, uh, we have a dedicated uh, website, the River Cities Alliance, on which a lot of this um, products is already hosted. So cities have um, direct access to all the tools and frameworks and the, and the knowledge uh, products that we have created. Uh, in the same way, uh, we have a quarterly newsletter uh, of RCA. So this essentially uh, captures, you know, actions that have been taken by cities, some good work that they have done, um, the activities that we do as a, as a network, as a platform. So to share with um, uh, all of them, um, we try to capture the knowledge partners who are there working. So if anything interesting they have been doing uh, in the area of uh, river management, so we try to put that together and share with the wider audience. One such initiative, so um, uh, last year we had uh, prepared this compendium of 75 river initiatives in which uh, we invited cities to share what work they had been doing and uh, uh, so this was done as a part of the uh, Azadi Ka Amrit uh, Mahotsav, so that's why if you see 75 unique river initiatives that we had captured and uh, if you see these initiatives, um, they are kind of, you know, uh, addressing various uh, aspect of river management. So. Um, either this water budgeting or reuse of treated wastewater, riverfront development. So a lot of this are the elements which are, uh, um, you know, vital to river management uh, was captured. One just example of, you know, riverfront activation and placemaking in Pune. So um, they are now in this process of uh, 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 developing the riverfront for Mulamutha River. So similarly, uh, we got a lot of this uh, interventions from uh, different RCA cities. And this is about Dhara, so it's driving holistic action for urban rivers. So this is now an annual meet of uh, RCA member cities, um, uh, which we plan. And it's again, you know, kind of an event where we come together and celebrate rivers. So Dhara 2023, if you see, this is some of the snapshot. Uh, um, it was recently happened in February and it was hosted by, uh, co-hosted by one of the RC member, Pune. So that's where, you know, the city kind of, you know, shows ownership that they being a part of RCA, they see the value of being a member of this alliance and how we now, you know, do it in a collaborative manner and take it uh, forward. So, yeah, so this is kind of, you know, pretty much the journey that we have, you know, done till now. Um, we have, so it's more about the National River Cities Alliance that I was kind of presenting and now moving ahead. Uh, this entire event what it's all about so expanding ourselves and taking this national river cities alliance global so what we have in mind and how we would like to uh, take it ahead uh, for that uh, i will now invite uh, uh, ashwini dubey from nmcg to just uh, take you through that part of the presentation thank you thank you rahul good afternoon everyone so after the successful uh, uh, event of Dhara and recognition in UN Water Week, uh, the NMCG and NIU realized the potential of uh, uh, this alliance. 
and launched it officially in March 2025, the International River Cities Alliance. So as we have already partnership with international countries, uh, by country to country partnership, the RCA is an initiative for city to city interaction. And uh, this will be achieved uh, by the, the four roles uh, which R IRCA have highlighted. The left uh, two roles are uh, dedicated for the knowledge aspect, the creation of the knowledge as well as uh, the dissemination of these knowledge products to the member cities. Thirdly, it will also fa be facilitating the uh, twinning city concept by uh, attaching the cities which are similar on uh, the fronts. And lastly, it will also provide the, uh, the funding agencies or an opportunity to create a market uh, in uh, India as well as other member, member countries who will be joining this alliance. Uh, next, as uh, we have already uh, heard in the round table, embassy table, the other countries are also having this expertise in uh, river water management. Uh, for example, Denmark is highly uh, efficient in groundwater management and Germany in uh, is working efficiently with uh, conservation of uh, water efficiently and uh, urban water policies as well. During our interaction with cities and international participants, we came across few other alliances as well, such as MRCTI, uh, which is a Mississippi River Cities uh, Tour Town Initiative. This alliance is basically an association of 103 uh, mayors along the Mississippi River, which works for the river rejuvenation and other aspects of uh, uh, Mississippi River. In addition to that, Netherlands, uh, India, Japan, Norway have also uh, uh, best practices for, for, uh, for sharing in this alliance. The next is the major activities planned under IRCA. So the, the primary is starting from the knowledge exchange and uh, uh, it will be facilitated through, through the capacity building program, the webinars, the online meets. Uh, the second is the strengthening of the academic pillars of Indian um, uh, academic institution. So the Indian institutes will be linked with the international institute on the aspect of urban river management. The third is to create a knowledge product uh, which will be a compilation of both uh, the practices, governance and the policies uh, in this sector. And uh, the last will be the showcasing this, these practices into the international forums uh, th th again for the m with an intent of sharing it to the cities who need it. Uh, this uh, the next slide will be uh, highlighting the impacts, uh, the major impact which IRCA will be making uh, to the river cities, the major commitments uh, pillars. So the first will be city to city uh, connection by which each city can directly link to other city and exchange on their respective practices. The second will be uh, RC IRCA will act as a dedicated platform to facilitate this relation. And third uh, will be the major opportunity for private players and funding agencies. Uh, that uh, being India is a being India a huge market for those fri private investors, and their expertise uh, can be used in uh, Indian context. And after this, the operation modalities of this uh, alliance is uh, it start with an uh, interaction of river cities. Uh, then uh, we discuss the, the the financial as there is there are no financial bindings or uh, obligation to this alliance that is discussed and then further the onboarding uh, of uh, each river cities uh, is taken place. So uh, primarily we are at after the first and second uh, stage right now. Uh, this is the uh, certificate of uh, joining RCA. Uh, as you can see, the declaration of Arus from Denmark. And uh, to facilitate all this, the Secretariat of uh, International River Cities Alliance is stationed at NIUA. And uh, the NIUA will be uh, focusing on these five key aspects to maintain the uh, smooth functioning of International River Cities Alliance. The first is hosting such events of uh, knowledge, uh, dedicated uh, hosting such knowledge events. And the second is uh, organizing uh, this annual meet of River Cities uh, Alliance city, member cities to exchange these knowledge products. And uh, similarly, during this interaction, the, the annual calendar will be discussed and uh, finalized to streamline the activities throughout the year. And meanwhile, the meanwhile in this process, we'll also onboard another uh, few other international cities to exchange this knowledge. Thank you.
<clears throat> thank you everyone for patiently hearing us uh, and uh, having the sort of uh, determination to go ahead with what the IRC and the RCA is all about. And thank you Rahul and uh, Ashwini for delivering it. And I'd like to um, sort of request uh, that we take a break and uh, head for lunch, please. Thank you. And then come back for session two. Thank you, everyone. Jaya Jaya Gange Namami Gange Nahi Rukenge Hum Swach Kare
जय जय गंगे स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे हम स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे स्वच्छ करेंगे स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे हम स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे हम स्वच्छ करेंगे तू युग युग से बहती आई तू ने ही हमको पाला है तेरी उंगली पकड़ चलना सीखा जीवन तू ने ही संभाला है तेरा कर्ज चुकाना है हमको कर्तव्य निभाना है हमको
कृष्ण महाराधयामी सकल कलुष भंगे स्वर्ग सोपान संगे सकल कलुष भंगे स्वर्ग सोपान संगे तरल तर तरंगे देवी गंगे
करेंगे स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे नमा गंगे जय जय गंगे नमा गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे हम स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे जय जय गंगे नमा गंगे स्वच्छ करेंगे स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे हम स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे नहीं रुकेंगे हम स्वच्छ करेंगे हमको पाला है तेरी उंगली पकड़ चलना सीखा जीवन तू ने ही संभाला है तेरा कर्ज चुकाना है हमको कर तुम ये निभाना है हमको
कृष्ण महाराधयामी सकल कलुष भंगे स्वर्ग सोपान संगे सकल कलुष भंगे स्वर्ग सोपान संगे धरल तर तरंगे देवी गंगे
जय गंगे स्वच्छ करेंगे जय जय गंगे गंगे जय जय गंगे नमामि गंगे
ये पहले शुरू कर देंगे अरे वो उसको अयोध्या ना पहले सीखा तो अयोध्या हो तो ये दे लगा दे ज्योति अभी स्टार्टिंग संभाजी नगर यस हेलो हेलो या हाय गुड आफ्टरनून सर सर आई एम रुचिता बंसल एक्चुअली मिस्टर विशाल सिंह कैन नॉट बी पार्ट ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन बिकॉज ऑफ सी एम सर सडन विजिट टू अयोध्या सो आई वुड बी प्रेजेंटिंग ऑन हिज बी आफ श्योर प्लीज वी कैन बिगिन द प्रेजेंटेशन फ्रॉम अयोध्या प्लीज Is my screen visible? Yes, please. Your screen is visible. Yeah. Please go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, firstly, a lot of thanks to NIU River Cities Alliance for giving uh, Ayodhya the opportunity on the work they have done. You know, on conservation, uh, preservation of water bodies in Ayodhya. Uh, so, just to give you a little brief, uh, you know, on the water bodies management in Ayodhya, we have basically. uh so you know in last 3 years lot of things have changed in ayodhya ayodhya has you know come up with a new development authority in the area has increased and that also basically required a master plan for the city of ayodhya and accord uh, as per that also we also realized that you know uh, because the saryu river basically runs through the city of ayodhya you know uh, it is essential to understand you know what are the existing uh, Water bodies which are existing in Ayodhya. So we basically, uh, you know, did a survey and found out there are around 108 water bodies which are existing in Ayodhya, and the identification was done on different uh, on different types based on the location, whether they are in urban, semi-urban, or rural area, based on the type, whether it's a wetland or it's a pond or it's a pond, based on the contamination level, because uh, most of these water bodies have turned into drains. or you know sewage dumping uh, kind of sites so we had to understand that how much contaminated they were uh, then what kind of source of water uh, was there and how much is the encroachment because you know uh, one is the contamin you know one of course happens with the dumping of waste other is you know people encroach those areas you know uh, by developing slums and all that so these were the challenges if you can see you know the sludges this is the exist this was the situation like 2 3 years back in most of the water bodies we had like 15 to 20 feet of sludge uh, we had water bodies which were left unattended since years a lot of encroachment uh, sites uh, overflowing with waste there were even like you could see a lot of plastic waste waste which was dumped over there so solutions implemented we actually wanted some uh, you know some solution which had very less of civil work and you know which could uh, create lot of uh, rejuvenation for a longer period so we went with uh, natural sewage treatment system uh, which was adopted for most of the water bodies uh, separation of rainwater and sewerage was done by earthen bund to form treatment canal and the lagoons Tapping off uh, large size waste was done, you know, uh, because it was very important to first basically take out the waste. Uh, then execution was done on the basis of earthwork, so we require minimal civil work. Uh, and plantation was done on ground along with there was a lot of community engagement involvement also done for these projects for the community to basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, educate the public that uh, you know they also want have to get involved. in uh, pre preserving these water bodies then sedimentation and decomposition of uh, sewage effluence was done uh, while passing through one lagoon to another via hume pipes so outcome of the project again i mentioned was one was the low operation and maintenance cost by avoiding concrete steel etc no stp and fc fstp uh, that resulted in a saving of electricity in the project uh we also were able to basically preserve lot of wetlands also so that actually rejuvenated the uh, biodiversity of the city uh, uh the whatever uh, soil and sewage was ex excavated that was used for bund formation and we avoided using foreign earth material in bund formation so i'll just talk about and show you you know what was the ongoing intervention and what progress we have achieved so this is the lal degree which is one of the 
so right now we have basically taken uh, 10 water bodies uh, which we have preserved sandhya sarovar is i guess it was the major uh, uh, major encroached and uh, uh, most polluted of the water body so this was the situation 2 years back for the water body and you can see the work which was happening during implementation the sewage which has been so just taking out the sewage and you know dumping it that only took more than 3 to 4 months uh so you can see the situation what was before during and after so this is what exactly uh, was done uh this is the situation today uh, and we have also tried to create you know some public plazas around so that uh, you know it can be used at some public spaces rather than just uh, you know keeping it again unattended we are also trying to you know uh, hire uh, some uh, ngos to do operation and maintenance of these sites on a regular basis so uh, then other thing was you know how to create uh, that space as welcoming so we actually uh, uh, d- there was a lot of artwork done along the sites uh, you know for people to ma- basically uh, you know ma- make these sites welcoming then this is the agni kund again you can see the before and after situation in this uh then this is the samda lake which was uh, basically a major one of the major wetlands which is now been uh, turned into a international bird sanctuary uh so uh, here also this was the situation in uh, 2000 i guess 2021 22 this was the situation a lot of sewage uh, was basically taken out uh, so this this is something you could see the before and after uh there was a lot of biodiversity uh, preservation also because of this uh then is the tilodki ganga this is again one of the tributary of the sarayu river uh this also shows the before and after photos uh, this is more than 20 km of uh, uh, stretch and around 10 km has been taken in the uh, uh in the first phase so this is again before after photos of the uh, city then we have also tried to basically in most of the kunds we have basically you, you know use this floating wetlands so that they absorb uh, impurities and utilize and basically their utilization is in an isn't growth of pl- plants uh, again i mentioned the community engagement played a very big role here uh, you know whatever artworks and any kind of cleaning was done you know the students and kids were involved in that uh, to make them understand you know why biodiversity why, why biodiversity why uh, preservation of water bodies is important in the city uh you can actually see now the turtles uh, you know they were rescued from the working sites and they were released in most of these uh, cones uh this is again the artwork done on different uh, along the different cones the other interventions which have been done on, on new infrastructure in uh, ayodhya is that we have identification of new infra- new infrastructure through gis mapping i've already said around 108 water bodies that is uh, basically on which the intervention ventions have already been decided but uh, in total uh, 200 have been identified through gis mapping uh, d- uh, there is delineation of water flow routes through contour mapping a uh, 6 meter buffer which is a no development zone has been provided around each water body rejuvenation and mapping of existing drains uh, the, this is the project i have already spoken about a uh, treatment of water stagnated areas through pumping st- station scheme we are coming up with six more uh, pumping water uh, uh, pumping station schemes in ayodhya uh, development of land through land development schemes such as tdr and tps in urban areas then we are also basically niu is helping to prepare urban water management plan for the city uh, and there is already investment which is 400 crores which is allocated for development of blue infrastructure in the city so uh, that's that's all from ayodhya side yeah um, thank uh, thank you ms urchita uh, we move now to our uh, next presentation and that is from uh, uh, um, the city of uh, chatrapati sambhaji nagar yeah formerly aurangabad and uh, uh, for that presentation um, we have uh, Uh, Mr. Aditya Tiwari, uh, he is the Assistant Project Manager at Aurangabad Smart City Development Corporation Limited. So, yeah, uh, Aditya, if you are there online, the floor is yours. Good to that. Good to that. Konnichiwa. Who is that? Good afternoon. Jai Hind. Namaskar. 
thank you to the Namami Gange Mission and the National Institute of Urban Affairs for giving us this opportunity to lead the first RCA Global Seminar on behalf of the City Administration of Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar. With your kind permission, we'll be just sharing our presentation now. If I may have uh, the presentation on the screen. So essentially, the entire story of our city, Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar, is the story of water. And throughout the ages, the interaction with water has paved the way for development and charted the course of history. With a water-centric agenda, Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar has been able to address the various needs of the city and its citizens and shape the landscape of development and the environment that exists today within the city. Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar and the modern city found its origins in the 1600s with the creation of a sustainable, unique water supply system created by a slave who rose to the rank of an emperor, Malik Ambar, an Ethiopian, who designed a kanat like aqueduct system, which locally are known as the Nehes, to supply water to the city. And the entire landscape of this historic city, of our historic city, has been shaped by the availability of water. And moreover, more than other cities, perhaps, the geography, the unique characteristics of Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar require that we address the needs of our city through a comprehensive water agenda. Yes. As we all know, the World Meteorological Organization has recently warned the international community of an El Nino year. And because we are a rain-fed, monsoon-dependent geography, rainfall is essentially one of the primary sources of water for our city. Next. So this is why Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar, perhaps of all places in the world, relies so definitely on uh, the effective utilization of water supply systems and water in general. We are a drought prone region who has started to experience a disturbed monsoon pattern with high vulnerability for climate change. But therein, with the challenge, also lies a unique opportunity. We are a growing city with a scope for a climate conscious development, and together with the government of Maharashtra, the government of India, and going forth with our international partners, we are confident that we are shaping an agenda that is for uh, the future of the Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar. Next. What began with the river restoration effort today has gone ahead and changed the landscape of how we look at water within the city. We have promulgated a unique model of river restoration involving and keeping citizens center of our entire agenda. We would like to share with you a small video of the ongoing work and what we are able to achieve through our river rejuvenation work. Thank you. The river rejuvenation effort that the city administration began 
on 25th of January 2021 has come a long way. And more than three years in the passing, we have been able to achieve successfully about more than you know, one lakh areas, uh, one lakh square meters of area that has been cleaned and cleared of plastic. More than about thirty thousand square meters that has been created freshly out of uh, you know reclaimed land. We have created a dense carbon sequestration potential with the plantation of about one lakh thirty thousand saplings and about eight kilometers of the lengths of the banks along this river that has historically been the lifeline of the city, have been pitched and all without creating any significant additional financial burden to the municipal authority. Next. This is also uh, the effect of an extensive solid-based management and liquid-based management strategy that we have been able to deploy and see results. And we will come how uh, you know, significantly these efforts in even such a short period of time have allowed us to build resilience uh, when it comes to climate change uh, within the city. Next. This is a classic case study that we've been, uh, we have been able to witness with our river rejuvenation work along the Kham. Uh, in, uh, you know, we had an extreme weather event in 2021 where the city experienced about 90 mm of rainfall within a short period of time and despite uh, such heavy rains the work that we've been able to do along the river helped uh, prevent any kind of flood uh, and loss to property or life along uh, for, for the people who live along the banks and this is the kind of work and effort that every city can possibly do with its existing water resources and its rivers uh, and see effects uh, to build resilience against uh, the face of climate change. We are blessed as a city to have a unique water supply system that still exists 422 years later. And with a challenging municipal water supply system, this is a perennial source of water that continues supplying water to the city. And we are working together with the Ministry of Jal Shakti to look at rejuvenating these Nehe systems, which are now part of India's, um, you know, Jal Itihas, uh, the water history of uh, the Indian subcontinent. And interestingly, this is where also, um, you know, comes the story of Malikambar, who built these systems about 400 years ago. What is unique and what we can share and co-build and co-learn with cities across the globe is how we've been able to do this. Like I've mentioned before, our model is completely citizens driven and citizen centric. Every Saturday, the city gathers along the banks of the river to help clean it, preserve water systems, improve ecology, plant trees, pick up plastics. And today, what began as a small movement has transformed the entire understanding within the administration and with the citizens of how our city's water and water resources need to be managed. Next. We've been working on a two-pronged agenda. As the Honorable Mission Director Namami Gange mentioned this morning, India leads perhaps the largest water harvesting and water conservation effort with the Jal Shakti Abhyan Catch the Rain campaign. In the city administration, we have a two-pronged approach catch the rain and tap the drain. So we look at utilizing the wastewater potential, uh, as uh, we also saw this morning uh, in a presentation uh, with our uh, Japanese delegation about how wastewater, especially in a drought prone region like ours, is helping transform uh, the landscape of uh, uh, the city and the farmers in the peri urban areas. Together with that, we've also deployed a combination of ingenuity and technology to address the water needs of the city. Today, we have an app that allows for citizens to understand their water supply timings, interact with the administration through toll free services that allow them to understand and easily address uh, uh, you know, the challenge that exists with the municipal water supply.
we've been working with the 2030 uh, water resources group uh, of the world bank uh, in a unique project where perhaps for the first time we have worked for treated wastewater to be supplied within the municipal limits to a peri urban uh, setting uh, working with farmers of a small village called zalta we began with 17 farmers uh, we are very happy to announce that now there are 50 farmers that are utilizing these water to grow crops uh, and uh, you know bring in circularity in the water systems uh, that we have available within the city we also have an ambitious scale up plan for all the sewage treatment plants uh, in line with the Nirmal Jal Abhyan of the Minister of the Government of India uh, and the Government of Maharashtra uh, to significantly map supply and demand uh, geographically across the terrain. So together, along with the World Bank and the City Administration, the Government of Maharashtra and the Government of India, we've been able to transform the lives of these farmers while bringing and mainstreaming water circularity as a policy uh, as well. Uh, Aditya, sorry to interrupt. Uh, okay. I would request if you can just wrap up your yes. presentation next yes, one minute, yeah, please. No. Yeah, thank yes. you. Yeah. So we, uh, we, we have, uh, you know, started off something called the Purple Revolution that looks at uh, uh, the wastewater as a resource uh, to bring about, you know, doubling farmers' income as a national priority. So these are the things that have helped us as a city, and this is what we believe works on the ground, uh, reiterating the points uh, of the mission director Namami Gange, uh, a people's approach combined with a whole of government approach and a whole of international community approach going forward is the key to addressing this challenge. Next. Thank you. These are the, some of the partners that we work with. Next. We've also designed our urban river management plan, very unique in a lot of perspectives together with the NIUA. And this is the takeaway message that we as a city of, the Chath of Chathapati Sambhaji Nagar would like to give to the first RCA Global Seminar. And it is this, as the world's biggest population, we both have the challenge and the opportunity together with our international partners. Because when we solve for India, we also solve for world, for the world, and solve for humanity. So thank you so much. Last slide. On behalf of the city administration of Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar, the government of Maharashtra and the government of India, we thank you so much for this opportunity of allowing us uh, to share our experiences uh, going forth. Uh, we look forward to a great international partnership with all cities across the globe. Uh, to address the cause of water uh, together uh, for a sustainable planet. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Aditya, for the wonderful presentation. May I now uh, request the special session that we're all waiting for uh, with presentations from our international cities. May I now invite Mr. Mark Turner, uh, the Natural Coast GM uh, team leader from Greater Manchester Combined Authority, please. Uh, Mark, if you're there online, you can please come in. Yes, hello, um, I'm here. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, Mark, we can hear you and see you both. Thank you for um, your time and for the presentation today. We are running a bit late, but you do have the due 15 minutes, please. You're welcome to start your presentation. Thank you, Mark. That's fine. And are you going to bring up the slides at your end? Uh, you can put the slides up from your side, Mark. Uh, we just, uh, if that's all right with you. Uh, uh, yeah? That's fine. Um, I'm just struggling to do that. Are you able to bring them up from your end? Bishop, can you please check if you can bring up the presentation from here, please? Thank you.
Yeah, Mark, it's being it's online now. The presentation. You can start, please. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation today, and hello from Manchester in Northwest England. Um, really pleased to be able to join you today. So thank you so much for the invitation. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Mark Turner. I'm a member of the environment team at the Greater Manchester Combined Authority. Um, and I work on a project called Natural Course, um, which is funded by the EU LIFE programme. So we're part of a, a European project based here in Greater Manchester. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so first of all, just an introduction to Greater Manchester. Um, the area that we cover uh, brings in 10 districts. So at the heart of our, our city region are two cities, Manchester and Salford, um, surrounded by eight districts, um, which include old industrial towns such as Bolton, Oldham and Rochdale. And very much in the same vein as the last presentation, our city is one that grew on the back of water. Um, Greater Manchester um, during the industrial times was famous for the production of cotton um, and that was very much driven by the presence of water, lots of water both um, in the atmosphere and flowing through rivers within Greater Manchester. So our city, our geography, our urban geography has very much been built on rivers and water here in Greater Manchester. So on to the next slide please. Okay, at a Greater Manchester level, we've recognised a whole series of environmental challenges. If we're to be able to move forward sustainably into the future, uh, we need to manage and address these challenges. Um, we've set out how we'll do this um, in an ambitious five-year environment plan that was launched back in 2019. There's a whole range of targets within our five-year environment plan, including a very ambitious target to be carbon neutral by 2038. So that's 12 years ahead of the, the UK national target of carbon neutrality by 2050. Our five-year environment plan also includes ambitious targets around river water quality and reducing the risk of flood. So the water targets that we've set out through our five-year environment plan are really in response to four challenges, four water challenges across Greater Manchester. The first one is one of quantity and too much water, so flooding. As you can see in the photograph top left, um, flooding is a serious issue within Greater Manchester. Our city region is surrounded by hills, um, we have quite a high annual rainfall level, so we experience river and surface water flooding on a fairly regular basis. Second challenge we face is a result of climate change and a challenge around too little water. Um, back in 2018, we had severe water shortages, um, but also maximum demand, which was partly a result of a series of fires in the uplands around Greater Manchester. So as our climate changes, uh, the need for water, especially during the drier summer season, increases. Third challenge that we face within the water environment is around water quality. Um, the legacy of our industrial and urban past is a heavily congested water environment. There's lots of discharges, lots of pressures, on the water environment as a result of industry, um, old and decaying infrastructure, and also a large urban population, roughly 2.7 million people living very close together within the city region. So lots of water quality pressures on our rivers. And then finally, the ecology, the biodiversity of our rivers. Um, rivers for hundreds of years in Greater Manchester have been seen as a, a source of water or a source of power or a way of getting rid of um, 
refuse and effluent from industry. So the ecology of our rivers has been very much damaged and challenged. We have a growing emerging problem of waterside plants, such as giant hogweed that you can see here, which infest the banks of our rivers. And these ecological challenges, along with the water quality challenges, really mean that some of the targets that we're working towards, such as the European Water Framework Directive, we really struggle to achieve good ecological status within our very human managed, heavily modified water courses across Greater Manchester. So next slide please. So just a little bit more of the, the context of Greater Manchester uh, from a hydrological perspective. The map on the left shows what we call the Northwest England River Basin District. Uh, so this is the, the management unit uh, within the European Water Framework Directive. Uh, so we're up in the northwest of England with Scotland to the north and Wales to the west. The map on the right shows Greater Manchester, the political boundary uh, within the dark blue area. Um, and as the map's trying to show, um, Greater Manchester geography doesn't uh, align with the geography of river basins. So we're at the bottom of some river basins, so water's flowing into our region from the north and the east. And then we're at the top of other river basins. So water that falls within Greater Manchester flows west and into other city region areas. Ultimately, the majority of the water uh, flows out through the River Mersey. Um, and all the water that falls within Greater Manchester is moving from east to west and ending up in the Irish Sea. So next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Um, just also talk about three approaches that we're taking to um, water management within Greater Manchester. First of all, I'll talk about um, a couple of European projects that we're working on or have worked on. Um, that then leads into work that we're doing around development of an integrated water management plan for Greater Manchester. And finally, I'll speak about a, a very recent, a very up-to-date development on a specific site close to Manchester city centre. So first of all, the European projects that we're working on. Um, as I said at the outset, um, I'm working on Natural Course, uh, which is the UK's only EU life integrated project um, and the aim of natural course is to help us to understand and overcome some of the challenges um, to achieving good ecological status under the European Water Framework Directive. The map on the right um, shows water bodies across northern England with the Northwest River Basin District to the left. Um, Greater Manchester is to the south, to the bottom of the region shown. And as you can see, the vast majority of water courses in our area are coloured yellow or red or orange. And that means they're failing good ecological status. Whereas many more of the water courses further north, um, shaded green, are achieving good water quality status. And how we're doing that is through developing um, a series of innovative projects, building capacity within organisations to tackle um, these water quality challenges across the Northwest River Basin District and also delivering innovative projects at the local level, which hopefully can be scaled up to a landscape or catchment scale and then ultimately into other river basin districts um, as a way of tackling issues into the future. The heart of our projects is very much collaboration and different organisations working together. Um, the governance of the water cycle within the UK is, is very complicated. So five organisations with a stake in that process are coming together to deliver natural course. That's ourselves at the Greater Manchester Combined Authority, um, a couple of government agencies in the form of the Environment Agency in Natural England, our local water company, which is called United Utilities, 
at a third sector organization called the Rivers Trust. So next slide, please. Just to give you a couple of examples of projects that we've delivered within Greater Manchester. And our approach is, is very much to take nature-based solutions, use a natural approach to tackling these water challenges. A couple of examples here on the left um, shows a series of attenuation basins which have been created to intercept water that's flowing off from an industrial estate. And the ponds will allow the water to settle, the contaminants to settle out before the water flows downhill and hits the river at the bottom. And then the slide on the right is showing increased tree planting in some of the uplands around Greater Manchester to try and slow the flow and reduce the risk of downstream flooding in this catchment. So flooding is a big issue in this particular part of Greater Manchester. And one of a series of mechanisms that we've developed to tackle that is increased tree planting in the upland areas. So next slide, please. Second European project um, to mention is called Ignition. And the aim of Ignition was to identify innovative solutions uh, to delivering sustainable urban drainage and to think about how we pay for these kind of developments. Um, and through this project, we were able to deliver a series of exemplar projects um, in the form of green roofs, um, swales and attenuation basins within the urban area, a whole series of sustainable urban drainage interventions. And our aim now is to roll out this approach, so to take the localised exemplar projects and deliver them at a whole neighbourhood scale. Again, with the aim of using natural solutions as much as possible and trying to retain the water that falls as rainfall as close to source as possible and using it within the landscape and in this case the urban environment to deliver a whole range of, of benefits at the local level okay next slide please so building on these projects um, we're now moving towards the development of an integrated water management plan for greater manchester um, and this has really been led by our mayor, our Greater Manchester mayor, who has recognised that the, the water quality and water quantity challenges that we face can't be tackled in isolation. As I mentioned um, previously, there's many, many organisations involved in managing the water cycle across Greater Manchester. So we've started this work on the development of an integrated water management plan by bringing three organisations together. That's ourselves as Greater Manchester Combined Authority, um, the government environmental regulator, that's the Environment Agency, and United Utilities, which is the water company. Um, and the aim of the Integrated Water Management Plan is to identify projects that we can deliver together to deliver more for the water environment, hopefully save resources, and um, work together in an integrated, collaborative way. So next slide, please. And what we're trying to show here is that on the left-hand side, three organisations coming together. We've signed a formal memorandum between us, but we've recognised that there's many, many more stakeholders involved in managing the water environment. So as we move forward with our integrated management approach to water, different organisations will come on board, including the 10 local authority districts that I mentioned before, and then ultimately engaging other public bodies, other businesses, other national agencies that work in Greater Manchester, and also crucially NGO organisations, local citizens and local community groups. At the moment, we're working as three organisations, but as we move forward, other stakeholders will come on board and hopefully we'll be able to engage uh, the community more widely. OK, next slide, please. OK, final bit, um, third part of my presentation. 
I thought I'd focus on a new project, um, exciting new development, right at the heart of, of Greater Manchester in the city of Manchester itself. Um, and this site is called Mayfield, very close to our main railway station. Uh, so if you go on to the next slide, please. So back in 2018, 2019, the Mayfield site uh, looked like this. It was a derelict former industrial site, um, site of 19th century cotton mills. Um, there was a, a Victorian swimming bath on this site. And at the heart of the site was the River Medlock. You can just about see the river in the top two slides, heavily neglected. Um, local buildings were falling down, very overgrown with vegetation and wildlife and full of litter and contamination. So next slide, please. So this slide is showing the proposal to develop um, roughly 24 hectares of land, um, and that will be built as residential and mixed-use development. But at the heart of this 24 hectare site um, is a six hectare park um, and this will be the first park within the centre of Manchester for over 100 years. So the first time that a park has been built in Manchester since the end of the 19th century. Um, and at the heart of this site is the River Medlock. So you can see the Medlock um, flowing through the site. And the Medlock is one of three rivers within Manchester. Um, the coat of arms of our city uh, features three lines, and those lines represent the three rivers that flow into the city centre, and the River Medlock is one of those. So really celebrating the history of our city and going back to the days when we were founded on water. So this project has involved creating a whole new park, uncovering about 100 metres of the river, um, to create a new park within the city centre. And this work, the work in developing the park, has been funded by our central government, the UK government, uh, using green recovery funds that came online um, after the pandemic. So if we can move on to the next slide, please. And this shows um, Mayfield Park um, as it is today. So the, the new park has been created, um, the river has been opened up, um, it's now a resource for the local community, um, and the surrounding plots, um, the remaining 18 hectares, um, will now be built out uh, through a whole range of developments, so residential mixed-use offices, um, to create a whole new district in the city centre. Um, as you can see, the river is it's much more open than it was previously. Um, there's been work within the riverbed. Um, there's been work alongside the river, increasing uh, the green cover and the ecology of the river, both on the banks and within the bed. And opening out the river has helped to increase um, its flood storage capacity, so providing a whole range of benefits. But as you can see, this is still an urban river. Um, something that is, is far from natural. Um, the river doesn't relate to its floodplain any longer, um, but hopefully through this project we've been able to deliver something which mimics uh, the natural state of the river and takes it two or three steps closer to being a more natural river. And this is very much the approach that I think we need to take um, within our urban rivers, recognising that we're heavily industrialized urban area we can't return our rivers to our nut to their natural state but there's a lot that we can do to encourage them to become better in terms of flood flood storage and provide a better home for, for wildlife and ecology and also to become a greater and a more useful resource Mark, for the local uh, sorry if we can please wrap up i think the next yeah one. next, next Thank slide you. please and last one and that was all I wanted to say for now. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hopefully I've been able to outline some of the challenges we face and uh, the solutions that we're developing. Thank you, Mark. That was an excellent presentation. I think this would be a real uh, sort of resource when we 
shared with our member cities from RCA. And uh, once again, thank you very much for uh, coming over and your time. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd now like to welcome from the city of Hamburg, Mr. Christian Ebel. Christian, again, apologies for running a little bit of delay. But if you're there, if you can please uh, let us know. Hi, Christian. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi. Apologies, Hi, Apologies for the delay, but uh, uh, welcome to the RCA and the presentation today, please. And uh, you're welcome to please start your presentation, Christian. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me. And I, I send the warmest greetings from the city of Hamburg on behalf of, of the municipality and city of Hamburg. I've prepared also a, a short presentation to acquaint you with the burning issues of water in Hamburg. I'm not so familiar to run uh, presentations with the Google tool, as I have hundreds of uh, video conferences carried out in the past due to the pandemic situation, and I'm still in home office. Uh, but I will try to, 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 to bring in my own presentation. Uh, I will try to, to share it. Uh, uh, I Push see something on the screen, but I would like to wish uh, to show my presentation. Uh, you should be able to see the slides now. Do you see my slides? Hello. Yeah, I just Christian, see, we can uh, present it from our side, if that's okay. Um, yeah, that, 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 that could be okay, but I would prefer it to show it from my side if possible. Okay. I've already shared, uh, I've already shared my screen. The question was whether you could see already my screen. Okay, we'll wait for you to get that. Okay. I will share it in a second. This is it. Okay. Do you see my screen now? Visible now. You should be seeing it now. Yes, sir. Do you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, perfect. Yes, uh, finally, uh, finally, we made it. Just I uh, will show you some general facts about Hamburg, where Hamburg is located, because perhaps some of in in the auditorium are not quite familiar with Hamburg as cities. <laughs> Uh, a city. Uh, this is uh, Hamburg on the global scale. I've highlighted Hamburg and Delhi. Hamburg is sited along the Elbe River, uh, the second uh, most important river in Germany after the Rhine. And of course, the Danube is much larger, but only a small, a, a small portion of its catchment region really reaches Germany. Um, Hamburg is located on the river. You can see here uh, the river's mouth at the North Sea. And in fact, Hamburg is located roughly 120 kilometers upstream from the North Sea. We have full lim limnic conditions, meaning Hamburg is surrounded by fresh water and we are by no means located uh, at the sea. Uh, some general facts about uh, my city. We have a total city uh, area of 75 kilometers square. 10% are harbor, is a harbor area. 8% are water and surface water surfaces with over 2,500 bridges. 
But in fact, we also have 30% of agricultural area. This is for foreigners very often surprising as we are, cons as we are uh, representing a city state uh, among the provinces in Hamburg. 6% of our territory are nature reserves, 4% are made up by forests. And in fact, we are the second largest city of Germany with 1.85-84 million inhabitants. And uh, we are hosting the third busiest port in Europe and the 18th busiest port in the world. Uh, let me give you a short overview of the legal basis for the action of the Department of Water. We, have the, we are a federal state in Germany and our state consists of 16 of 16 Länder or province or, or, or states and the federal the federal legislation foresees that every one of the states have their own water act inside uh, the umbra under the umbrella of the federal uh, water law this very often uh, could be understood that the minimum standards are set up by the umbrella of the federal law, which is then broken down into the, in, into the water late legislation of 16 federal states. Running a federal state and coming to decisions is sometimes difficult, as you could vividly imagine. 16 states <laughs> implies that we have 16 water laws and 16 different approaches to water management until the, the implementation of the Water Framework Directive took place in the year 2000. Uh, bad tongues tell us that we are pursuing somehow the Frank Sinatra principle, meaning you have 16 states and 17 opinions, and of course every op opinion is most important. The water management in Hamburg is based uh, on the following pillars. We have the ministry, which is responsible for flood water protections for surface and groundwater, stormwater management, contaminated sediments, water conservation is, are some of the issues the water management is concerned of. Furthermore, within Hamburg, we have seven district councils or boroughs, which are responsible for the planning uh, and realization of, of the river's restoration and the maintenance of the smaller water bodies. And we have, of course, also the drinking water and wastewater utility, uh, which is also involved in stormwater management and planning and realization. For us in Hamburg, as we are a port city, and here we have an aerial overview of my city, is that basically in Hamburg, water is coming from all sides we have heavy we have we have we have rainfall we have we have river offflow of the elbe river we have astronomic tides reaching hamburg and storm surges which uh, reach uh, dangerous levels for that reason the whole city area is uh, basically flood prone and is uh, is protected by high dikes which reach up to eight meters above sea level and of course we are also uh, pro we also produce drinking water from from groundwater uh, what in general terms one could state is that the climate change is increasingly affecting the citizens safety and quality of life i think this is globally valid Regional climate models uh, forecast the increase of storm water amount and intensity in summer. We are facing sea level rises with the risk of flooding areas and flooding increased. And uh, we need to s continuously expand the existing sewage water system. But of course, you cannot, you can never demanage, uh, you can never design the sewage uh, system according to all possible uh, rainfall which uh, which which might occur furthermore we identify also as further 
challenges, if you like. We see urban heat island effects and stormwater runoff disturbances. One of the reasons is the continuous surface sealing. We are sealing more than 100 hectares per, per year in Hamburg and our city is continuously growing also in inhabitants. And, and the sealing of surface enhances uh, the development of heat and has negative effects for surface water runoff. We are facing uh, the challenges of climate change I, manage, uh, I already mentioned. We have rising temperatures, we have a seasonal change in precipitation. We believe that we face more and more frequently extreme and locally expressed extreme rainfalls. And we are somewhere between having flooding effects and floods in the street, on the streets uh, uh, as a product of heavy rainfalls. But also we are facing to our surprise droughts in small rivers and streams, not in the Elbe River necessarily, but smaller uh, streams have, have fallen dry. Uh, and what we see uh, in the urban areas, flooding already is happening. We see somehow heavy rainfalls and flash rainfall, stormwater events that can basically happen everywhere, meaning all of a sudden it's raining 48 millimeters, for instance, in 20 minutes and producing unpredicted uh, damages in the local uh, infrastructure. Here are some images of uh, what we were facing in the year 2018. In 2018, we had a limited rainfall between 80 to 120 millimeters in 30 minutes, between 30 and 90 minutes providing damage to private property, public infrastructure uh, uh, and, uh, and goods. For, for we were lucky and no, we had not to mourn uh, human losses. For that reason, uh, we are putting forward in Hamburg a project, a very, pro a very interesting project called Rain Infrastructure Adaptation, which I will uh, present in, in the following slides. The issue, the, 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 the antique issue was to get the water as fast as possible out of uh, the city. And so I mentioned the sewers in such dimension that it allows a drainage of the city in the at fastest possible uh, uh, rates. But uh, we, from this, we, we have modif this leads to modification of the runoff scenario of, of the surface waters and is not uh, something one could consider a sustainable solution for the city. And we are now turning away from, uh, from, from draining the city as fast as possible to strengthen ourselves against flood and, uh, and flash floods and to conserve the water bodies, aiming at an approximate near natural water balance, turning away from conventional approaches to, to sponge city approaches, to de-seal surfaces, to, 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 to store water within the city and not having uh, and not producing uh, flooding effects. Christian, you have it's three minutes to more, the please. urban hydrological process, uh, Chris, Christian, uh, you have the classical uh, combination between evaporation, infiltration, and runoff. The more you seal the, the surface, the stronger is your runoff, and the lower the infiltration and groundwater rejuvenation. And what we seek is that we try to diminish the runoff and enhance the infiltration also for the renewal of groundwater resources and to diminish also uh, and, and to increase evaporation by, uh, by, by green areas.
No. Christian, you have uh, three minutes more, please. If you may yes. end. Thanks. Uh, I will I will try to speed it up. We try to, we try to retain water on sites uh, and promote uh, the infiltration. And these are basically examples. What we are trying to, to show, what we are trying to do is that we start uh, at the surface we look for water-sensible solutions at buildings. We use uh, water-sensible solutions uh, in green areas and rivers as infiltration, purification, and retention yeah. elements. We we have a closer look at roads and parking areas where we can provide uh, water-sensible solutions. Uh, also, uh, within a tree and and drainage structures along the streets. We show, we have uh, introduced a lot of uh, water sensible solutions using squares uh, and uh, creating artificial ponds in the city. The RISA project was carried out, it was an interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary project uh, which we carried out with, with, with all stakeholders involved. We have produced a lot a lot of brochures and uh, fact sheets and documentation about what is possible within the rainwater infrastructure adaptation. And what we uh, thought, what we learned is that single interests are often stronger than common interests. Necessary space for technical measures is competing with the required space in the city. And uh, investors are taking decisions in order to maximize profit and the implementation of uh, such measures still require lobby work with political decision takers and landowners. And RISA is still not seen as a chance, but as something that produces additional costs. But the costs of initial investments are higher ranked than the costs of maintenance of the mitigation of stormage, of stormwater damage costs. And if you like, and that is what I would like to, to drop as final message, the human factor in water management, and that is valid, I think, throughout the world, changing the mindset. It is this mental reframing, meaning turning away from conventional solutions and approaches to tackle the problem, is by far more difficult and lasts longer than the development of innovative solutions themselves. I would like I would I would like to stop here. Thank for your attention. My presentation is longer, but in order to stick to the to, to the to the timeline, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much, Christian, and we appreciate your insightful presentation on the city of Hamburg. Um, yes, it was a more it was more or less a, a, a spontaneous contribution from our city. Thanks for inviting us to the event. It's always a pleasure. And the last slide of mine shows you uh, further possibilities to, to, to increase uh, uh, your, or to inform you about uh, our activities. Pleasure, pleasure to have you here again, Christian, and thank you once again. Um, I believe the next presentation is to be from the city of Copenhagen by Jean, but uh, I believe Gite, you have an engagement uh, at uh, 3.30. So Jean, if that's okay with you, can may Gite present uh, right now for uh, our host municipality, please, if you do not mind. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for inviting us here. Thank I you. can give my presentation now, but I can also wait if Jan wants to go first, it's fine with me. Uh, we are okay with either. Uh, Jan, I would, it's your call. I would, oh sorry, I would prefer if Kide starts now. Okay, and then I'll I'll start now. After okay, do you have my presentation so you can show it or do you want me to share? You can share Gide from your end if that's all right. I'll try to see if I can share. Yeah. Um, Arus. Um, we are trying from our end as well. So whichever comes first, Gide, if that's all right. <laughs> Um, I'll try to see if I can 
share my screen. Can you see the screen now? Yeah, the screen is visible, please. Okay, this is from our end. We have started. Can you see the screen from our end? So you have started the presentation, sorry. Yeah, yeah, from our end. You can okay. go ahead and you can request good. us to change the slides as necessary. So good. Thank you. I just come back here. Oops. Yes. Um, yeah. So, okay. Should I just start yeah. to keep the timeline? Uh, I can yes, introduce please, please myself. Please start. Thank you. You can start. Thank please. you so much. Thank you so much for inviting us today. Uh, I'm uh, from the city of Aarhus in Denmark, where I am the head of our water department, uh, which is the authority doing the planning and uh, the regulation and so on in the city of Aarhus. I would like today to take you through a project that we have had here in the city called the Aarhus River Project. Uh, first, I will give you a short introduction to the history of the River Aarhus, then take you to the pro through the project, uh, talk a little about the benefits that we have had uh, on the project, and then add on the climate adaptation um, that we did. Uh, and then lastly, a little about the economy. So the history of the River Aarhus. Um, I don't know if you can see the full screen because I can't, but it's okay if it's uh, okay for, for everybody else. Can you see the presentation, everybody? Okay. The, the history of Aarhus and the River Aarhus. Aarhus is the second largest, largest city uh, in Denmark. Sorry? Uh, um, uh, Gita, you can tell us which slide to present. We are on the agenda slide right now. Yeah. You just, uh, please, uh, the next. Next, please. Yeah. And the next. Yes. So, Aarhus is the second largest, largest city in Denmark. Aarhus has always been surrounded by water, and the city, city was founded by the Vikings about 1200 years ago. And actually, the name Aarhus comes from the word Aras, which means the river mouth. Aarhus is uh, 91 square kilometers, and we have uh, approximately 350,000 uh, inhabitants. So it's, um, it's a big city in a Danish scale, but uh, it's a, small, a smaller city, you can say, or a middle city in an Indian scale. So uh, we have three last river systems in Aarhus, and one of them is Aarhus River. The Aarhus River is 40 kilometers long and runs, runs from two big, big lakes through a large river valley, through the city in, in, and into Aarhus Bay. So as you can see at the picture at the left, the river runs from west to the east um, into the harbor side. So the next slide, please. So from the time of the Vikings and up to up till the 1930s, Aarhus ran freely through the center of the city and was a vital part of the city and, and, and the life in the city. The next one, please. Then in the 1930s, or, or you could say through time as the city grew, more and more sewage was let into the river, uh, which at last was almost an open sewer channel, with the risk of a lot of different independent um, waterborne diseases. And that led to uh, the city council decision in the 1930s, where the city council decided to cover up the river to reclaim the land for the development of the city. And that's what you can see at the picture at the upper right. Next one, please. So, uh, in a few years, the, the, you could say the face of the city, it changed. 
you know, from the water body and to, into a road with a lot of traffic. The next one, please. And that was the way it looked for several years, actually 50 years. So when you grew up in the 40s and the 50s in the city of Aarhus, you didn't know there was a river below the surface. It was just a part, integrated part of the city. Next one, please. In the 1989, the city council decided to reopen the river um, and as you can say, give back the river to the, give it back to the city. At the same time, the river and lake was used more and more by the public for recreational purposes as sales force and so on. One day, a citizen took contact to the city council because he wanted to sail a canoe from the big lakes from west and into the harbour side. And he wanted to do that without the risk of getting sick from the contact with the water. This. Um, this um, this started the Aarhus River project because the city council said to the authority, "You have to make the cleaner the, the water clean." And uh, the the purifying of the water it was focused on the hygienic water quality, so that was what we were looking into. And at the same time, the project was intended to ensure that the beautiful natural areas. Um, also was uh, developed around the, the river. And um, actually, when we look into the water quality, we also used the opportunity to, to lift the quality of the whole city, the river sites and the harbor sites. So, so the development of the city was also a part of the project. The next one, please. The first thing we did was to look into a mapping of the sources for pollution. We had two STPs uh, serving a, a big part of the city, and there was an outlet from these STPs, of course. There were 75 overflows from the sewer system, the combined sewer systems. There were 58 drainage or rainlet, rainwater outlets and there was discharge from rural households and there was also a drainage from the countryside. So we had to look into all these sources and do something about them to get a good hygienic water quality in, in the sense of E. coli and streptococcus. That was what we were looking most into. Next one, please. And which action did we implement then to solve these water quality problems? Central to all the solution was establishing surface sewage basins with the purpose to collect the sewage water from combined sewage system under severe rain bursts. When the rain stops and there's place in the sewage systems, the sewage is led from these basins into the sewage system and tra transported to the STPs. So you can say this is a, a, a very good way to avoid the overflow from the combined sewage systems. At the pictures at the right, you can see the size of one of these subsurface uh, basins. It's huge. It's 63 meters long. It's, uh, I think it's about 20 meters wide and it's nine meters deep. So it's huge basins below the surface. And the, at the picture it's opened, but of course today it's closed. So you, you can't see it when you walk on the, on the surface. We also implemented a disinfection of treated wastewater from the STPs. But later on, this, um, this was stopped again because it, we, we found out that it didn't have any measurable effect on the water quality in the river system. With other words, it wasn't a good business case because the environment benefit was too poor. We, we monitored it on the water and we could see the environment benefit was too poor. So it's also an attention you can have that you have to look into the solution in a broader context and always be sure that, uh, that it makes sense what you're doing. So we do not pay for something which doesn't pay off uh, in an environmental way. We also inter implemented some IT solutions. We automize the wastewater system. So the sewage is directed to the part of the pipes where there's room and space for the water. In, so you can say, that we are using the whole sewer system maximally without any need for increasing the existing capacity. 
So also, that's a very good business case and a very good way to use the water, uh, the wastewater system, uh, to secure a good water quality in uh, our recipients, our river. Next one, please. What we also did was implementing an, um, a strategy for separating the combined sewer system for the whole city. And that's a really long-term strategy. It's a, it's a difficult task to, come to separate the system, which is already there, and it's also very expensive. So we have this strategy reaching out to 2085. But we know that we all the time we need to 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 work on this strategy to secure the the pure water a good water quality. Uh, and besides that, we also looked into the rural area where there was a sewage of the rural households, and we also reopened the last part of the Aarhus River. The next one, please. So, what was the benefits from this project? Of course, we, we had a good hygienic water quality in the river. We also implemented nature-based solutions with all the greenery in, uh, along the riverside. Uh, and we also created a time and space for the water, you can say, for example, in the sewer basins. But besides that, we had a lot of benefits from the city. We had the opportunities to to have a more uh, a health, healthy population, you can say, because they could do the, uh, the water sports, for example, and they um, yeah, and they could do a, a lot of other things also at the at the water side. We also improved the nature, and we enhanced the biodiversity, and uh, we also. So improve the environment in the city. I think uh, after this presentation, Jan from Copenhagen will talk a little about a swim bath that they have made at the harbour side. And actually, we also succeeded in making a swim bath at the harbour side after we have finished this Aarhus River project. So that also gave a lot of value for the city. We had a lot of shops, cafes, and a growing tourism along the riverside and we have increasing house prices. So you can say the whole project was about water quality, but there was just a lot of other benefits for the city. The next one, please. As an add-on add -on to the project, we implemented a lock at the river mouth uh, to protect the city from flooding from both the, the harbor and the riverside. The project, um, project here uh, took place around 10 years ago and uh, the lock it, it closes out automatically when the water level is 1.4 meter above above normal water level there's six pumps with a capacity of 18 cubic meters per second uh, which can pump out the water from the river into the harbor side when we have the the high uh, level and on the seaside so almost Bay can rise 2.5 meters without causing flooding in the city. And the highest water level ever measured in the Bay up till today is 1.8 meters. So this is, uh, this is a good protection of the city. But with the new scenarios we are looking into with the climate changes, we, we are observing all the time if uh, and sometimes maybe we have to raise this lock. Next one, please. So if we look into the economic side of the project, it shows that a good comprehensive planning and an innovative, solu an innovative solution, they pay off. The Aarhus River project um, has cost uh, around 340 million Danish crowns, and that's 340 crores in Indian rupee. It sounds like a lot of money, but actually it has been a very good business case when you look into the house, the rising house prices and the tourism and so. So the project have paid back to the cities many times. 
Um, the lock uh, at the river mouth uh, had a price of 46 million or 46 crores. And in comparison, a traditional solution with subsurface detention basins would have cost more than half a, uh, 500 million or half a million or 500 crores Indian rupees. So again, it was a very, very good uh, business case to build this lock and, uh, and uh, protect the city from all the damage from the flooding. So next one, please. This was uh, my words today on the Aarhus River project. So um, I hope it could be, uh, give some inspiration into your good work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gete. I mean, and apologies again for the delay, but it's an excellent presentation, which we have been long to hear since Pune, but finally we have made it. And thank you for your patience as well. Jean, uh, again, uh, if you are there, if I may I request you to please uh, start your presentation, please. Yes, I will. And thank you again for the apology and for coming over, and apologies for the delay. So, please, if you are there, you may uh, okay. pre present your present your slides, please. Okay. Can you see my screen? Uh, we can see you, not the screen as yet. Uh, so, uh, uh, just a second. Mm -hmm. Det jeg skal holde et foredrag for nogen i Indien. Det er den her, ikke? Ja, vi kan høre dig, Jan. Ja. Oh, sorry. You can... Can you... Share it for me? We can see you on the screen, but uh, not the presentation. Not mine. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, fine. Uh, now, I'm we, trying. now we can see on the screen. Oh. We, okay, okay. We Thank you. We are sharing it from here, Jan. So you can yeah. tell us when to change the slides. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and you have two presentations? Hello. Mark, uh, sorry, Jean, we have only one. Uh, I'll sh this is, the f is this the first one? No, it's the second one. Okay, let me just uh, quickly share the first one. Okay, but you, you can start with this one. Yeah, if you can start on the second one, I'll just uh, present after this. Yeah? Okay, yeah, I start. Thank you. Okay, uh, so this isn't Harstrup River, you see now. But I didn't have a, an appropriate picture to show you. So it's a highway on the water in Copenhagen. Uh, just a picture. Uh, if you will continue. And you want to thank him. Uh, what you see here is the Harstrup River. You can see my no. Uh, oh, yeah. It's a little confusing. I can't show you. But the river you see in the middle, uh, it's go through the catchment area. Uh, and uh, uh, there's, we are 10 municipalities and the utilities to work about this project. Uh, and uh, the purpose with the project is that we want to protect property uh, along the river and we want the possibility that the municipalities can let out rainwater uh, to the river so it can uh, function as a fast transport of uh, water 
how to the sea. Uh, yeah, the catchment area is an important thing in the economy, as I will tell you about on the next slide, please. Uh, I have just uh, listened some of uh, the issues that we have made uh, agreements about uh, in the partners. Uh, we have made a cooperation agreement, how we shall map the sources, so we have a full overview of all the sources, and the water quality in the sources, so it's not only E. coli, but it is also heavy metals and uh, organic substances. Uh, it's just uh, something we do very precisely in the beginning, uh, so we are not surprised by the contents later on. Uh, we have optimized the calculations uh, by a model, uh, refining it the whole time. Uh, and we have uh, charged some solutions which every part work with because we are taking very much care. Now we are uh, 10 uh, municipalities that we don't pay too much and we don't pay for others. <laughs> uh, so therefore we use the same solutions uh, and the solution is uh, flooding areas along the river uh, and it is basins along the river and it is uh, pipes beneath the roads uh, which cross the river uh, they are expanded and then it is widened of widening of the river where it is too small to transport the river uh, the amount of water we want. Uh, we use the green solutions because they are much cheaper uh, than uh, concrete basins. We have made a lot of concrete basins, basins in the harbor, but it is where there's a lot of uh, buildings and roads and not uh, uh, free areas to use as uh, to uh, retain the water in. And when we know the solutions, uh, we it's possible to determine the economy uh, more or less precisely uh, so that we don't become surprised. Uh, when we start the project, we end out with a plan with all the projects or sub-projects. We call them sub-projects when they are enclosed to a, a single uh, munis uh, municipality. Uh, and the total amount uh, becomes too expensive. So we have to start again, and then it took two years more. Uh, it was not so, we were not so happy about that. <laughs> uh, and the tasks and roles when you make the project are uh, defined very precisely so there can be no discussion about how you shall do it uh, and who is responsible for it. Uh, and now when we are making our projects, we are very happy to this uh, uh, description. We call it a handbook uh, which is made. Uh, and then there is uh, the how we share the expenses when we are 10 partners uh, and it is so that we use the reduced area in each municipality uh, related to the total area of the 
whole catchment area. So the percentage, uh, the municipality, the reduced area in a municipality uh, is of the total area is the total is the percentage they have to pay of the total projects. It means that every municipality pay, for example, if they have a reduced area on uh, 23%, then you shall pay 23% on every solution in the whole catchment area. Uh, and it's uh, functioned well, and there's no claims between upstreams and downstreams uh, municipalities because they benefit both uh, of the total projects. Uh, yeah, uh, next uh, slide. Uh, yeah, and we have made an organizational structure because when you are working together, uh, so many partners, uh, then you need uh, a structure to guide the plan, uh, else it's uh, uh, become too confusing. Uh, we have a steering group and a working group as an, a normal organi organizational structure. Uh, the project group made all the work, <laughs> as in other cases, uh, and then uh, the, it's accepted mostly <laughs> by the steering group uh, and we have a project secretary which make the coordination uh, of all the projects and the communication uh, between the steering group and the working group. Uh, and then we have been working on this for 10 years and now we have uh, an accepted uh, plan uh, and uh, if you will i just have to before we continue to say that we have a local steering group uh, in every municipality uh, if there arise problems then it's the local steering group in the first place uh, who uh, solve the problems uh, and together with the working group uh, suggested for the steering group. Uh, next slide, please. Yes, uh, to the left you see uh, a plan for the total catchment area. Uh, every uh, uh, there are 40 project, uh, projects uh, in the area and uh, to the right you see a sequence plan uh, to the sequence uh, they shall be made uh, and you can see it's the period one uh, and you can also see that it shall uh, finish uh, next year uh, and uh, there's only one project which is finished. All the other projects are running now. All the projects for this period one is running now, but we expect them finished in 25 or 26. So we are a little delayed. And I think it was the last slide of this presentation. But I have sent you one more of the harbor, if you want to see it. Yeah, Jan, we'll just load that up, the yeah. harbor one. Thank you.
Yes, it's Copenhagen and Barfing. Uh, it's now approximately 70, 17 years ago that we make our first harbor bath. Uh, and you can here see the uh, one harbor bath and a beach uh, because we have a lot of bathing places in Copenhagen. The next one, please. Uh, the port in 1990 uh, was very polluted. And if you press once more, uh, the next one, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, you can see there's open to the sea in each end of the harbor. So, and then we have for 30 years ago, uh, more than 100 outlets to the harbor, uh, and with a frequency between 10 and 40. Uh, but uh, a politician suggests that the area around the southern part of the harbor should be made more recreative. And uh, this uh, means that I will follow that my boss suggests that we should have uh, water quality correspond to the goals on the land side. Uh, so it was he fought for that because we should at that uh, time make a water air plan for the harbor and in that it was suggested that the water quality should be better uh, maybe not bathing quality but uh, much better and it will cost several hundred million crowns which is a lot of money in Denmark Next one. The next one, please. Yes. And the way that we improved the water quality in the harbor was uh, constructing a lot of these uh, retention basins. Uh, uh, but it is concrete and really expensive, so you don't make them bigger or more numerous than necessary uh, and today they also are there's a great emission of carbon dioxide from this concrete uh, constructions uh, so it's we don't uh, we still make them, but uh, we prefer if you can do it in the same way as Aarhus do now, uh, by uh, separating uh, the rainwater from uh, to a separate sewer. Uh, the next one, please. Uh, here you can see all the retention patients we have made in Copenhagen. You can see in, along the harbor and inside the country at some lakes. Yeah, the next one, please. And here you see the effect of all the retention uh, basins. Uh, it goes from a discharge on 1.6 million cubic meter uh, per year to a little less than 300,000 per year in 2010. And today it is about uh, 200,000 because we have made a few more. Uh, 200,000 cubic, uh, cubic, cubic, cubic meters uh, per year. Next one, please. And here you see the results. A lot of uh, bathing places in the harbor. The green ones are harbor baths and the 
Now it is so small, but you see a lot of bathing zones too. Uh, there happened this that it become an extremely big uh, success, and all the politicians uh, uh, become all want to suggest a new bathing zone or a harbor bath. And it has resulted in what we see now. Yeah, the next one, please. But uh, because you make retain, retention patients, doesn't mean that the pollution disappears. Uh, uh, when the rain become bigger than the retention uh, patient can contain, it there is still an outlet. And when uh, there is an outlet, you have to. Uh, you tell people that there is some pollution now, and you have to get out of the water. So we implement the warning system that all of us were talking about, and uh, it's functioned very well. Uh, and now we have uh, developed the warning system further, so that we have signs at every bathing place, uh, with is actuated when there is pollution, so uh, people can see it and leave the water uh, when the when the sign is actuated. Uh, the next one, please. And here you see the sign. Uh, you can see at uh, today. Uh, or there's three green spots on the sign. It uh, shows the water quality today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. So it shows the water quality for the next three days. Uh, if it had been a bad water quality, it had been a red lamp instead of a green lamp. Yeah, next one, please. Uh, and we have an app too, uh, which can be downloaded by everyone, so they can see is a uh, good wa uh, bathroom water policy today, or is a special part of the harbor uh, where we shall go to to bath. Maybe the northern part is polluted by outlets from there, and then it's possible to bath in the southern parts, if the stream not uh, uh, shift directly. Uh, but normally we have to close down the harbor bath two times per bathing season, and uh, uh, it is what is normal accepted by our politicians. And uh, about all the uh, positive things, the thing about it is uh, actually the same uh, what uh, Gita said, told you about Aarhus, that uh, you have a lot of happy people, you have uh, prices on uh, properties rise, and uh, a lot more tourists, uh, and the tourists prefer the harbor bath instead of other known uh, culture sites. Uh, so we are proud of that. Uh, the next one, please. Yeah, uh, what we can say about uh, planning, uh, it has been uh, uh, big work, and it is a cooperation between a lot of units in the municipality, uh, planning unit, uh, sewage planning, and 
uh, environmental uh, goals have to be achieved. So uh, there have been many people involved. And now we see that uh, there's a little uh, uh, it played together with uh, climate change in that way that it rains more in Denmark as in many other places. So now uh, we have maybe to make uh, new retention basins. Uh, and as you see, we have been working uh, for 15 years uh, before we opened the harbour bath uh, by making retention patients uh, before it was possible to bath. So it takes, and I think 15 years is not so long time uh, when you think of what we have achieved in Copenhagen, uh, but 15 years we feel it as long time uh, before it was possible to to bath uh, again, and 15 years with a political uh, commitment. So it's very important that uh, the political commitment doesn't change with the next uh, election. So, uh, but it was fulfilled. Yeah, and I th the next one, please. Yeah, it's the first hour path. Now we have uh, changed it to a more modern one, but uh, uh, you see, happy people. And I think it was my last word. Thank you. Thank you, Jean, and for an excellent presentation and for taking all the time. I believe uh, we reached out to you at the very last moment, and I again like to thank Anita for, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, so, uh, <laughs> requesting you to take it at the last one. But thank you again, Jan, for your time and the presentation for the city of Copenhagen. So, and a lot a special request, thanks to all uh, the team members from here, from NMCG and NIUA. I would like to request uh, Mr. Dheeraj Joshi, the Deputy Secretary of uh, NMCG, to kindly share the vote of thanks, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sumit. So, I would like to just sum up the in, in a nutshell today's proceedings. Uh, the RCA River Cities Alliance Global Seminar was focused on potential collaboration with like-minded partners to create a platform for international cities to be involved in the River Cities Alliance through host of partners and stakeholders which are required to take this forward. So uh, at a first uh, session, uh, DG Sri Ashok Kumar focused on the need for transformational values towards improving the quality of life through rivers in cities and he stressed upon that lot of good practices outside India are there which can be learned upon and he also stressed upon funding agencies which have been brought on board towards supporting this venture. Then we move forwarded in the next session of ADBI, Mr. Hashimoto led us through DWAT's approach in Japanese cities in keeping rivers clean. Aro Sudaipur example was shared by Ms. Anita, a councillor from Embassy of Denmark, sharing the Twinning City initiative, wearing the Danish model utilizing Indian context, particularly community engagement, has been implemented for river city development. In the special address by EDT, Mr. Mathuria stressed on the service delivery focus on KPIs, which can be a key knowledge sharing among the partner river cities. Then we had presentations from RCA member cities of Ayodhya and Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar with excellent work they have done in the water bodies rejuvenation. Then we had the privilege of international cities sharing their wonderful experiences in river, uh, river uh, rejuvenations, especially Manchester, 
sharing the knowledge with focus on multi sectoral working under natural course project city of hamburg shared key aspects of challenges and their risa project especially related to flooding city of arus shared a beautiful wonderful case study of giving back to the city its lost river of arus through holistic action plan which led to the improved quality of life city of copenhagen shared example of harasrup river project and another example through reduced sewage load to the ports in copenhagen towards improving the quality of life and he also stressed upon the key aspects of political commitment and long term goals so as a vote of thanks i am proposing please kindly excuse me if i pronounce any name wrongly and uh, kindly excuse me if i name if i miss out any name inadvertently that will be unintentional on my part i would like to first of all thank the guiding force behind this river cities alliance uh, shri ji ashok kumar the director general of nmcg shri dp mathuria executive director technical uh, mr bhaskar das gupta executive director finance mr mukul verma from the embassy of uk mr shayan yusufi embassy of austria ms beat langset royal norwegian embassy ms anita sharma embassy of denmark ms priya ghosh us embassy mr william c harford us embassy mr dirk from the embassy of germany ms martina from giz ms nishi pant from netherlands embassy mr kajushi hashimoto from adbi dr pawan from adb mr ashish ranjan from adb Mr Devinder Rawat from ADB Ms Upneet from World Bank Mr Alok Suman from World Bank Mr Ramesh Mukala from World Bank and from British High Commission I would like to thank Mr Mukul Verma Ms Junus Shariati Ms Daljeet Kaur and the cities that have participated today the city of Ayodhya vice chairman of Ayodhya Development Authority Chhatrapati Shambhaji Nagar Mr Aditya Uh, international cities presentation for greater manchester by mr mark hamburg mr christian copenhagen mr nielsen aros ms gitte i would like to also take this opportunity to thank the nmcg team mr sumit and mr ashuni especially for their tireless working day and night for this uh, uh, global seminar making it a great success and other nmcg officials present here including it and media team and i would i would i would like to thank the uh, who is led by mr victor and other niua partners all the nice staff of india habitat center who are involved in making this uh, first rca global seminar a wonderful knowledge sharing experience i would like to thank all of them finally as a last words as stated by the honorable minister of jal shakti at the un water conference 2023 he appreciates that the appreciation of the world to india's success in sdgs achievement including water is led by people's participation and whole of government approach of which this rca is a shining example where ministry of jal shakti and ministry of housing and urban affairs have come together for this partnership and looking at the motto of g20 of which which is uh, presided by india and uh, india is proudly hosting is vasudev kutumbakam whole world is one family one earth one family and one future so taking this forward through international river cities alliance what we are focusing is transforming transformative solutions through whole of world approach and partnership for knowledge sharing thank you very much thank you dhiraj ji uh, for the closing remarks and uh, thank you everyone may I request uh, revlesh to uh, gift a memento to the honorable ds please dhiraj ji you can come please
Dear Ji, may I request to please come over? We need to hand over my memento to Victor, please, for organizing this. Thank you, Victor. Rahul, you can also please come up, both Victor and Rahul. Victor, Rahul, if you can please come up after that. Rahul? Alok, if I can request you to please come. Can you please come over? Dhiraji, okay. Uh, Nishi, if I may please come over. Come, come. She can collect for one more unless the official return now. Huh. <laughs> no, I think he's. Thank you everyone. Thank you for your time. Yes, yes. So, yes. I think, uh, you know, a large part of today's, you know, work has been kind of uh, headed by Sumit. So, it cannot end without it. <laughs>